Hello and welcome to another stream here on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. I am Johnny Chiodini. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, gosh, that rolled around quickly. Or didn't, just torturously slowly, didn't it? But it's, uh, it's 2022 now. Um, let's, let's, let's get it. Let's do it. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's, God, it's been ages since I've done a painting stream. Um, and uh, what are we going to be painting today? Such a good question. Let's switch camera modes. Um, surprise, surprise, it's more, it's not Blood Bowl, it's Dungeon Bowl, but it's basically the same thing. Um, with some key differences, which I can talk about in a bit. But, uh, as you, you can see, this is a, a painted model. So we're not painting this one. This one's been painted. Um, but this is a dwarf for the College of Fire for Dungeon Bowl. And uh, basically, I've got five more dwarves to do. Um, in uh, in in the 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 the, the same colour scheme, Emerald has done a super chat saying, "Now, Johnny, you must know what it's time for." So here's the thing. If uh, if you're if you're new to to the channel and you're new to chat, hello, welcome. It's lovely to have you here. Um, last year, I painted a bear. Um, it was a zombie bear with a clown sort of, um, well, not a clown, it had sort of a circusy hat and a sort of nice ribbon of things around its, um, around its, its chest. And I said, this will be fun. Let's paint this up. By the end of the stream, I regretted it hugely. It was horrible, horrifying, in fact. Um, and we dubbed it 2020 The Bear. And then for the rest of 2021, we, anytime somebody mentioned 2020 The Bear, once per stream, I would have to show said bear. I think it's time to move on. I've, Emeralds has done another super chat saying, bear, 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 show us the bear. Emeralds, I got it the first time. I, okay, I will show 2020 the bear this once, but after that, we're drawing a line under 2020 the bear. Maybe we'll find a new cursed model to show off this year. Um... Maybe we'll get 2021 the bear, as Michael Berthelsen suggests. Um, <laughs> the nice switch says, please, I just had COVID. I can't do the bear as well. We just feel like some traditions are good and some traditions are good when they stop. And this is one of them. So please do look away if you don't want to see 2020 the bear. Because 2020 the bear is going to just... Yeah, here's... Here's 2020 the bear. It's a it's a bear in, in clown makeup with exposed flesh and a hat and intestines and ribs. And I just feel like, you know, like New Year, New Me? I for Brennan has done a super chat saying 2020 the bear is life. But the thing is, like, a new year is, sure, it's an arbitrary date in the calendar, but it's also a chance to reflect and to look ahead and to work out what we want to bring forward into this new year and what we want to leave behind. And I think what I want to leave behind in 2021, 2022 rather, is 2020 The Bear. So uh, we might find a new cursed model. We probably will. Don't worry about it. I've got a goose somewhere that's attacking someone. Yeah, uh, I need to fix it. One of its um, one of its wings has come off, but I do have a furious goose, so I'll probably paint that at some point. You know, we'll find something new. Um, so there we go. The nice switch says goodbye, bear. Hello, dwarf with a fat ass. Right there we go. I mean, dumps like a truck, right? So anyway, right, let's paint some dwarves. Uh, this is a color scheme I worked up and wasn't sure about at first, but actually it really grew on me. Um, it doesn't contain any cream in the recipe, which is bizarre for me, but it is a mixture of um, golden brown, which is really more of a yellow from Pro Acryl, texture like sun, and terracotta from uh, Vallejo Game Color. So there we go. I for Brennan has done a super chat saying, I'll give 2020 the bear a good home. Emeralds has done a super chat saying, yeah, no worries. If it's getting irritating, I'll definitely stop. F in the chat for 2020 the bear. Cheers, Johnny. Oh, it's not, it's not a... Um, I don't think it was 
ever irritating. I just feel like we're all going to be okay, and we need to. We'll find we'll find something new in twenty twenty two. Anna Working says, your two cameras are out of sync. Oh, yeah, quite badly, aren't they? Yeah, that's because um, I have to put a delay. Let me fix that. Uh, I have to put a delay on. There we go. That's better. It's still slightly off, I think. But um, I have to put a delay on the camera when I film uh, Jedi Fallen Order because there's ever so slightly a bit of latency um, between... The camera and the PS5. Anyway, right. Enough chit-chat. Let's put paint on a model, shall we? Yes. How is everyone? Um, are you all well? There are 175 of you watching. Gosh. Um, um, yeah, I hope you're well. I hope you had a lovely relaxing break. Um, if you didn't, hey, thank God that's over. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, shout out to... Anyone who had um, had COVID or had to change their um, festive plans because of COVID, uh, I hope you're all okay. It's a, a real fucker, isn't it? But, you know. Abby Marie is on Super Chat saying, May your 2022 be full of thick dwarves and furious geese models. Thank you very much, Abby. Right. Okie dokie. Here we go. Da, da, da. One dwarf. Freshly assembled and primed in black. Let's paint. This is a Troll Slayer. The Troll Slayers, as you'll see as I paint this, are notable for having a massive beard that are actually holding them off the ground, but also a lot of skin on show. They are wearing sort of like leather daddy harnesses, but apart from that they are just shirtless. And they're an absolute delight. The cornerstone of any good dwarf te <coughs> team. Excuse me. Although um, Dungeon Bowl, I'll explain what Dungeon Bowl is and what the differences are. Um, even though you know we did talk about it before when we were painting elves with dump truck asses. Um, uh, Dungeon Bowl teams are uh, comprised of more than just one type of model. So this isn't a dwarf team. It's a dwarf and ogre and noblar team. If you're uh, into that. Um, mm, mm, mm. So I'm just laying down a base coat of uh, skin tone here. You can sort of, I mean, I told you it was leather daddy harness, didn't I? Dwarves, daddy AF. <laughs> this is the kind of energy we want to bring into 2022, you see, talking about butts and... Dwarves being Daddy AF, we can leave the bear behind. I mean, one of my favourite things we did last year was talk for a, almost half an hour about the different butts in uh, Lord of the Rings. Moriax42 says, as Gimli also said, and my ass. <laughs> um, for those of you who may not know, actually, because I realised I just I reeled off some character names. Uh, this is uh, this is an ogre, uh, which you can see is is a lot bigger than a dwarf. Um, uh, but the other thing I mentioned was a Noblar. Noblars are little tiny, tiny, tiny little gobos. And this ogre is what's known as, an, as a, as a Noblar punter. Uh, cause it can hoof, it can either kick or throw, uh, Noblars down the pitch, which is fun. So they're all on the same team. So I'm going to paint all of them up in the same color scheme. But um, anyway, Claire de Bear has done Super Chat saying, since it's the 3rd of Jan, can we have a toast to Professor J.R.R. Tolkien? Uh, always. What's significant about the, um, the 3rd of January for J.R.R. Tolkien? 3rd uh, thir thir Jan? J.R.R. Tolkien? Is it his but J.R.R. Tolkien, 3rd Jan. Oh, it's his birthday. Happy birthday, J.R.R. Tolkien. You're fucking brilliant. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Um, yeah, we can absolutely raise raise your glasses to uh, Professor J.R.R. Tolkien. Jolkin, Rolkin, Rolkin, Tolkien. Thank you for genuinely changing all of our lives. 
especially when we're talking about butt. I've run and done another super chat saying Dwarf Daddy 2022. Here we go. Mabel Teacher says, Johnny's painting and Lord of the Rings bastardization stream is what you're going to have to call Mondays soon. I know. I still have a Boromir uh, model that I need to paint up for a Blood Bowl trophy, actually. But uh, there we go. Do, do, do. So did everyone have a nice New Year's Eve? What did you get up to? I will preface this by saying I think New Year's Eve is a load of bollocks. Um, the waiting's all wrong. Because people... I mean, certainly in the UK, when people start a party, they start around seven or, seven or eight, and um, if people are drinking, they start drinking then. Which means that, generally speaking, parties in the UK... Like, a lot of house parties, for example, they'll wrap up by half one, two in the morning or whatever. Um, whereas, obviously, in a lot of European countries, people don't even go out, out until 11. That's when they start their evening. So it means that in the UK, people are like, it's New Year's Eve, and they start at the normal time. But before midnight, everyone's just, like, waiting for the moment. And then midnight happens, and everyone's like, wee! But then everyone's already smashed, because they've hit it too hard too early. And no one actually enjoys the few weird hours between then and three in the morning. So basically, it's just like, it's an evening where... The fun isn't fun before midnight, because people are expecting it to be really fun at midnight onwards. And then after midnight, no one's actually available to have fun, because they've all hit it too hard. That's my problem with New Year's Eve. Although I did have a nice New Year's Eve, so there we go. Grumble says, New Year's Eve is a load of bollocks. I spent mine playing video games with friends. We talked, we stalked Dowd's butt to see where he goes in the butt ranking. Oh, lovely. How is Dowd's butt? Um, EA, EA122 said, I spent New Year's Eve with my family. It was quiet and lovely. Nice. Ooh. Colin Lasser says, I had a date for New Year's Eve. It was December 31st. Bloody hell. Good luck or a quick death has um, dropped an absolutely massive super chat. Um, thank you, good luck or a quick death. That is extremely generous of you. I really, really appreciate it. Bloody hell. What a way to kick off the year. Um, I hope you're well. I, I hope you had a, a lovely restive uh, break and that 2022 brings you only good things. Um, thank you again. That's really massively, massively um, generous of you. Um, ooh, Nick Jeffrey says, hi Johnny, happy new year, it's already been an expensive one for me, my laptop died on Saturday, so here's my first super chat from the new device. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your old laptop, but a new one is always exciting, that's, um, that's got to be a lot of fun. Um, those of you who enjoy streams, uh, where computers don't struggle, um, to, uh, to, to do their, their job, we'll be excited to know that I have ordered a gaming PC. It's not arrived yet, it's coming later this month. But I'll be able to play things well soon, so that's good. Um, Aditya Gaitonde, I'm so sorry, I probably said that horribly, horribly wrong, has done a super chat saying, Hello Johnny, sorry I won't be able to stay and watch. Just wanted to drop in and say thank you for everything you do, and you are a massive inspiration for me, and I... Brackets platonically love you. Now my 13-year-old lad Bonzo needs me as he is kind of ill. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear about Bonzo. Um, I hope Bonzo gets gets well very, very soon. Um, I can imagine at, at 13, Bonzo's kind of taking life a bit more in the slow lane. But um, yeah, I hope I hope he comes good. And thank you very much for a very su a generous super chat as well. Um, that is really lovely. And for the kind words. Um, uh, yeah, as I said, to good luck or a quick death. I hope you're well, and I hope you have a, a bloody fantastic year ahead of you. I hope everyone does, in uh, for reference. Uh, I've been has done another super chat, saying New Year's Eve was okay, got what I assume is Omicron, but it was more like a bad cold. I'm supposed to go back to work tomorrow, but quarantine is until the 7th. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's good news that it doesn't seem, you know, for, for a lot of people, obviously not everyone, uh, it's not uh, very severe, um, that's, you know, really good news. It means that, you know, fewer hospitalizations, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it also just means that fewer people spend time feeling like shit. Uh, but nonetheless, um, yeah, I, I hope the rest of your isolation time isn't too, um, too boring. Uh, over Christmas and New Year, my wife and I stayed indoors 
because uh, my wife tested positive and was sick with COVID, uh, I somehow did not get it, which was remarkable uh, because we simply couldn't quarantine in, in our flat, so we didn't. Uh, I just stayed in with her, but I didn't get it. So hooray for that. But yeah, uh, right, that's another one. Second dwarf. Just doing a, I'm doing batch painting right now because, well, we've got four hours or three and a quarter, three and three quarter hours left on this stream. So we've got plenty of time to sort of fill these, these sods in and it's a bit more efficient. The reason I've only got one dwarf painted up is that I wasn't sure about the color scheme before. So I did it as a test model and then I painted it and I went, yes, that will do actually. I like it. So there we go. Nick Green says, did nothing for New Year's Eve. I'm giving my notice of leaving my job of five and a half years in about 10 minutes. I'm so anxious about it, but also glad to now focus on my mental health a bit. Nick, that sounds like a really positive change. Um, no wonder that's nerve wracking. Five and a half years is a long time to be in a job. Um, and yeah, uh, I hope it goes well. Um, it should. They, you know, the onus is on them to be graceful and gracious about it. But yeah, that's that's a big change. So it sounds all for the positive. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised you're feeling a little bit anxious about that. I'm going to paint the rest of this dwarf's calf. Then I'm going to take off my headphones and then take off my jumper because I'm very warm. Just giving you all of the real exciting need to know information here on this stream. Ah, oh, Emma Benton is in chat. Hello, Emma. Happy New Year. I hope you're very well. I've painted dwarf blood bowl models before, but I really heavily changed them for my Carriage and Overlords team, so I've never painted them with ponytails before. It's quite exciting. Right. Okay. Give me one sec. Anonymous says, something to keep in mind, a less likely to be serious but more infectious variant still likely to result in more hospitalizations simply because more people get infected overall. That is a very good point. That is just how numbers work, isn't it? I forgot about that. Um, thank you for the reminder of that. Um, yeah, we are still very much in the midst of a pandemic and it's still serious and bollocks. But, um, yeah. Right. Oh. Ugh, Arcadia says, just a quiet New Year's Eve, movies, video games, and cheese board. Ugh, love a cheese board. Great shout. I'm going to put some music in my ears, just quietly. Pet me up a little bit while we crack on with Zwerves. Yes, okay. Alrighty, that's not gone on in a very even coat. I think I need to put more paint on the palette. <coughs> Nevermore says, just woke up, what did I miss? Meh, not loads. Um, we're not doing the bear anymore. That's the, the headline. <laughs> but uh, we'll cover that in uh, future streams, I'm, in, I'm sure. Emma Benton says, my partner and I stayed in and had a lovely bunch of Japanese food to celebrate. It was delicious. That sounds great. I had a lovely bunch of Japanese food. Diddly diddly. Oh, and we've been talking about butts. That's right, Cookie Cat 94. Thank you for reminding me. Quirty Presser. What a, what a bloody good username that is. Quirty Presser has done a super chat saying, read any good books lately? I have. Um... I read uh, Such Dark Things, I believe it's called, by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, who has written uh, quite a few books. I've read a few of them now. Um, and it's all about vampires, but it's all about vampires in... Uh, a, in a world in which people know about vampires, uh, 
B, it's set in Mexico, specifically in Mexico City. Um, and it does some really interesting things with different types of vampires. Like, the kind of... The vampires we think of, you know, as like, you know, oh, bloodsuckers and thralls and all that kind of stuff, like sort of Dracula types. There are only one type of vampire in this book, and there are other ones. Uh, some of them don't even have fangs, some of them do. It's really, really cool. Um, and it's just a good sort of little thriller that ticks along really well. So that was good. Right now I'm reading The Girl and the Stars by Mark Lawrence, who has written a whole bunch. Um, it's set in the same universe as his book, I think it's called Book of the Ancestor series, which is starts with Red Sister and is all about uh, warrior nuns, um, which is a great series. I genuinely recommend it. Pick up uh, Red Sister is the one to start with. It's very, very good. The Girl in the Stars is fun so far, but I'm not loving it. So um, what else have I read recently? Not loads. I kind of slowed down toward the end of the year because I was just so tired. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Amrails has done another super chat saying, would you say you're doing, we're doing the bare minimum in 2022? Absolutely right, bloody, bloody bear. Um, and Nick Jeffries on super chat saying, by the way, did you get my Christmas card? Yes, I did. Um, because we were isolating, unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to go to the PO box um, before um, we got out again. So I went to the PO box um couple of days ago. But yes, I did get your card. It was lovely. I got some really nice stuff in the post, actually, um, including some rain, uh, reindeer dice from Arcadia and John, um, and some some super spicy jelly beans, which I'm not... <laughs> I'm sort of looking at them and being like, that looks, that looks like a painful experience. But um, I also got sent some inspiration coins, which I, they're really heavy, so they'll fly well when I throw them at the Oxventurers to punish them for puns. Um, yeah, generally speaking, you have some lovely, lovely festive treats in the P.O. box, so thanks to everyone who sent stuff in. That's very kind of you. Mm -mm. Ooh, Dr. Brangos says, I'm excited for my very first game of Blaze in the Dark tonight, playing a cutter in an assassin's gang called... Where's it gone? Oh, bloody hell, I'm way behind on Super Chats, aren't I? Uh, assassin's gang... Fuck, where's that gone? Oh, here we go. Assassin's gang named Thin Va Finn Vale. Mmm. I'm going to come... Actually, you know what I'm talking about now. I have never been involved in a Blades game in which uh, people didn't choose Shadows, um, the sort of really sneaky crew type, and I'm desperate to see what it plays like when people are assassins or cultists or whatever, so that sounds very, very cool. Uh, right, let's catch up on superb chats. Danila Dragon is on Super Chat saying, Hi Johnny, happy painting. Oh, I'm currently painting a barbarian guinea pig for dystopian storytelling board game Aftermath. Do you know the game? No. Aftermath bard game. Oh, it's by Plaid Hat Games. They make good things, generally speaking. Oh, this looks like fun. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the models are great fun. Aftermath looks very, very good. I, um... I don't tend to play games like that much anymore. Like I used to play Mice and Mystics and um, Darkness Comes Rattling and stuff like that. And I kind of burn myself out on them. But I think they can also be bloody good fun when you get like a good game and you get a good group together and you're rattling through them. I hope the painting goes well, Danilla, and uh, that you have a great time with, with the game. Thank you very much again for the super chat. Hannah Axelson has done a super chat saying, so you're saying that the bear is on pause? If we keep this up, the bear's going in a bucket of acetone and I'm going to melt it into goo. Actually, it's resin. Would that work? I forget. I know you're not supposed to put resin on acetone on plastic. I'll try it. We'll see. Ifa Brennan has done another super chat. You really don't have to super chat everything, just FYI. Um, but I do appreciate it. Uh, I have to share this book. As a DM slash GM, you might like this. It's called The Monster Know What They're Doing. It's all about monster tactics. Oh, that sounds fun, actually, because I'll be honest with you, when I'm doing stuff like D&D, &D, I mean, I'm fairly notorious for throwing bosses at parties and the bosses just stand there, take too much damage and then can't do anything and, and die. Um, some would say I'm just bad at balancing combat um, encounters, and I would agree. But anyway, um, some you know, sometimes it you've got a stat block and you're like, well, I'll just try and hit one of them. And that sort of feels like what you're doing. But when that's all you're doing, 
they can feel a bit limited. So that sounds very interesting. Oh, hmm. Ooh, Dr. Brangal says, book recommendation that I just finished, The Three Body Problem. Bloody loved that book. I have also read The Dark Forest, but I haven't read um, the third one in that series, Death's End. I really should. Uh, Emma Benton's on the super chat saying, to start a zoo, you need four animals. One grizzly, one brown, and two polars. It's the bare minimum. This is really how we're starting 2022, isn't it? An idiot with a workshop is on Super Chat saying, Damn you, Johnny, for getting me into another hobby. Damn you and all the dump, dump truck badonkadonks you paint. Hey, don't don't blame me for the, the dump truck asses on some of these Games Workshop sculpts. Actually, I need to show you a model very specifically in a minute. Um, going to do, right, one more... Super chat. Uh, again, Nick Jeffrey saying, by the way, talking about D&D, love the latest Tox Venture. Have already got an idea for a new custom shirt of Corazon dancing on the joyful ham nation. <laughs> that is very strong. So, because I can't help myself, uh, I backed uh, this Blood Bowl team on uh, Kickstarter. It's made by Grebo Games and they're Chaos Dwarfs. It's called Dwarva Gedoom. Uh, and they're great. But, um... oh, uh, hang on. <laughs> Addy, are you okay? Says, of course, they're talking about butts again. Welcome back, Addy. I hope you're well. It's good to see you. Um, someone just asked for the PO box address, so I will stick that into chat. Um, mm -mm. Da -da -da -da. Whoop. Uh, the it's always formally form. Ah, Reese Jones says, Dwarvagadum. Hello, Reese. How are you? I hope you're very, very well. Because uh, you're my mate. <laughs> oh, fuck. There you go. It's it's done the formatting thing again. But uh, actually, Reese's is perfect timing because uh, it's you brought my attention to this. This is a, a Chaos Dwarf team. And it's gorgeous. Like, you've got these, like... Come on, focus. These Chaos Dwarves that are just, like, beautifully detailed. It's going to be so much fun to paint, right? But you've also got, as part of this set, Bull Centaurs. And they are, as they sound, okay, here we go. As you can see, I haven't put these together yet, but we've got sort of, let's move that a little bit. Centaur, like horse body, <laughs> and then you've got sort of, you know, furious, furious chaos dwarf head, right? Very fearsome, going to be absolutely tearing up the pitch. They're rearing up. They're going to do some punching, but... But, but, look at how much work they've put in. <laughs> look at this butt. It's got, it's got a butt on its butt. It is so muscular. It's incredible. So, look out for that stream. Addy, if you thought we were talking about butts now, you just wait, my friend. You just wait. So that's a team I'm very excited to paint up. Um, the nice switch says that is the most mu muscular ass I've ever laid eyes on, right? Uh, Corvus Albright is on Super Chat saying early haiku for early haiku time as I am in meetings for the rest of the stream. The new year is here. Possibilities abound. Don't fuck it all up. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Corvus. Um, oh, uh, Claire de Bear has uh, done a super chat saying, Raz off the bear for the charity mind. I'm starting to think up my um, what charity stuff I want to do this year. Uh, and I think probably putting um, putting uh, 2020 the bear on the eBay would probably be quite a good way to quickly drum up some cash. So I will probably do that. Um, Rob Graves says, what did I just enter into? Welcome aboard, Rob. Happy New Year. Um, I'm also planning... I want to raise some money for the RNLI to, uh, this year because um, they've been vilified a bit for helping people drowning at sea, which is ridiculous. So, um, uh, yeah, I've got some ideas for stuff, but, um, you know, I'm just going to get into the swing of the, the new year and we'll see from there. Ooh, the nice switch says, I don't know. I think any money the bear can make may be cursed. Yeah, God, that's a point. It'll be like, uh, here's a searingly contemporary reference for you. It'll be like when Her Hurley wins the lottery in Lost by using the numbers that they have to put into the machine and it doesn't go well for him. All of the money is tainted. 
It'll be like that. <laughs> anyway, right. Here comes the Pro Acryl Color Golden Brown. Texture like sun. Which is actually more of a yellow. Because, as you can see here, it's come up pretty lemon on uh, this here... Um, this here already paint, 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 painted dwarf. <laughs> nice, which says, please, not the lost reference. Please, please. <laughs> Colin Lasser says, wait, vilified for helping. Yeah, the, basically, um, there are right-wing commentators in this uh, country, including the Home Secretary, who are basically like, oh, Pete, we should send back all of the boats coming over here bringing refugees. Despite the fact it is never illegal to um, seek refuge and seek asylum in uh, another country. And these people are uh, basically, like, they have no other option um, than to attempt a difficult and dangerous crossing of the, the British Channel between France and the UK uh, in, in makeshift boats. And the RNLI save those people's lives because it's the right thing to do. Um, and... Uh, Somehow they've come under fire because basically there's some some horribly horribly xenophobic and or racist people in this country have said that like it's bad and that we should be nudge just nudging the boats back out to sea, which is a death sentence. So um, I mean the upshot of this is that uh, the criticism has actually led to an inc like an extreme uptick in donations to the RNLI and they're great and they do really really important work. Um, this is a lifeboat service for those of you outside the UK. Um, uh, so actually it's, it's proved positive for them, but it also means that they've come under a lot of fire from just some repugnant people. So I would like to do my very best for them. Uh, also the, um, most busy lifeboat station in the UK is not on the coast. It's in London. It is near Waterloo Bridge. I used to pass it every day on my way to university. Um, and it saves people who have either fallen into or jumped into the Thames. So they're, they save countless lives a year, and um, I would like to help them keep doing that. So there. So that's a that's a stream we're going to be doing. Um, I was thinking because I've got to start painting the Ideneth Deepkin, the wet elves from Games Workshop. I thought about trying to paint the entire box in in one stream um, to raise money for the RNLI, but then I kind of. At the same time, my gaming streams tend to tend to attract more viewers, so I don't want to basically I don't want to limit the amount we can raise by doing something more niche. So I'm still going to think about it, but maybe I could do both. I don't know. We'll see. Lucy Quinn has done a super chat saying, "Whatever the curse model of 2021 manifests itself as, it should have a great ass. It's the minimum requirement." Correct, Lucy. If it doesn't come with one, I'm going to mold one, <laughs> sculpt a butt. Um. Uh, yeah, I will. Don't you worry about that. I will. I will sculpt a butt. Maybe we should be worried about that. No, it's okay. It's fine. Um, na na na. Um, mm -mm -mm, sorry, I was just reading a quick email. And now I will nip back to chat. Adio, you okay? Says butt sculpting stream, please. I'm not very good at sculpting, but I would like to try. The nice which says a butt sculpting stream would be great, though. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Let's sculpt some butts. Um, a Smith has done a super chat saying, "I turned 50 on Sunday, so the holiday was very much about the occasional panic of what the hell have I done with my life." Wishing everyone a good 2022. Um, well, I hope that panic is over. Um, I'm sure you've done many things with your life of which you can be proud, and I hope you have a bloody great time turning the big 5-0. Um, congratulations. And uh, uh, preemptively, a very happy birthday to you. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time surrounded by loved ones. So there. Oh, that was a bit of flesh that I've painted yellow. That's fine. The thing about this paint is it... Uh, it... Goes on a li little bit. It needs a few coats, basically. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There we 
go. RV Dammit says, enjoying the Pro Acryls overall? I really am. The Titanium White is a godsend. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I haven't started them yet, but I'm going to paint up the fucking metal um, Tomb Kings I have, and I'm going to use the jade colour I bought, um, which I think is going to be really exciting. Oh, shit. Hold the phone. Burrito has dropped uh, a pretty massive super sticker, actually. Thank you very much, Burrito. That's very, very kind. Um, it, okay, here we go. So, have you all heard of a pear? Uh, a pear is a fruit. Um, it, it is, uh, by definition, pear-shaped, uh, which is an idiom in the UK for something having gone wrong. When we say it's gone all gone pear-shaped, we don't mean that it has got a rounded bottom and a, and a smaller top. We mean that it's gone, it's gone a funny shape. It's gone wrong. Um, I mention this because it really does seem like something has gone wrong. In this super sticker, we have a pear. It is the fruit. Uh, it, uh, it is huge, vast, in fact, um, much bigger than pears are supposed to be. They're normally sort of you can hold them in your hand, but this one is towering over four buildings. Uh, these buildings are shaking, and clouds of dust are being kicked up from the ground because the pear, who I haven't mentioned yet, has arms and legs and a face, and is wearing a sporting headband. It's white with a red stripe through the middle. It also has two yellow flags, and is stomping about the place, endlessly rotating, and uh, shaking the city to its very foundations. It is, uh, as, as Anonymous says, a kaiju pear. Um, the, if... If nothing else, we can say that truly, for this super sticker, something's gone pear-shaped. And that's, that's, thank you very much, Burrito. Um, Burrito has then followed up with a super chat saying, May Pearzilla regale you with gargantuan. Hashtag, bless this year, Johnny. <laughs> thank you very much, Burrito. That's very kind of you. I hope you're well. Um, it's, I can't believe we're going into our second year of titting about on on YouTube and Patreon and talking about butts. I just got a WhatsApp notification. Never mind, doesn't matter. Um, that's another thing we need to look forward to. I need to start planning the first, first year sort of birthday stream for this channel, which will probably involve eating some low-quality cake that preferably comes in a big metal sheet tin. Um... And uh, I'll take you all on at Tetris again, probably. It's about time. I have seen that the nice switch in particular has only been sharpening her skills at Tetris 99, so I can't wait for that to happen. And then, of course, we'll have Josh the Tetris Cryptid. Was it Josh? The Tetris Cryptid? Crib? Cri uh, Tetris Cryptid. We'll show up and destroy everyone again. Oh, Reese Jones says I'll do you a high quality vegan cake if you like. I mean, I'm never going to turn that down. Although, uh, at the minute, I am very much not vegan. That sort of. That took a uh, knock at the end of the year. But it'll be back. It'll be back. Uh, Reese, I should say, is one of the Hot Bobs League. Uh, one of the founding members, in fact. And they are bloody great. Um. Like me, well, I got through to the semi-finals on the technicality. Uh, we were very much middle of the pack, um, middle bottom of the pack, all last season. But a new season's coming. But uh, yeah, between then, I'm hoping to get some uh, decent dungeon bowl in, which is why I'm painting this team. Uh, I'm actually having a friendly with James on Wednesday, Reese, which should be very, very good. Uh, and then hopefully, I do have a stream on this very channel, but hopefully I will also be around for some turnip if that's happening. So, exciting hobby times. Ooh, this yellow is not... Mm, not not playing ball right now. Ha! Huh? Not playing dungeon ball. So yeah, I should have mentioned, what's dungeon ball? It's basically blood ball, but with a different format. Because uh, if you're familiar with this channel, you will have heard me bleat on about... Blood Bowl enough. Um, it is um, basically, uh, it's American football, or it's kind of more like rugby, but Warhammer. So you run around with teams, you smash each other up, you try and score touchdowns. In Dungeon Bowl, um, you play in a dungeon and 
you don't know where the ball is. It's in a chest. There are six chests, but five of them have bombs in them. So you need to run around and find the ball and then score the only touchdown. It's the first to score one touchdown wins the game. It's very funny. There are magical portals um, that you can zip through and possibly get lost in. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a dungeon crawler, but you're playing a, a full contact team sport. It's very funny. Uh, Emeralds has done a super chat saying, "Oh, I, oh shit! I just remember tomorrow is my birthday. I am not ready to be twenty twenty. Uh, I'm not ready to be twenty two. You're not turning two thousand and twenty two. Uh, don't make me. Although I did get to pick up one of the Sonic. Uh, no, I did get to pick up the Sonic Lego set and the D and D rules expansion box, guilt free. Those are some good gets. I've seen a lot of people assembling the um, the Sonic Lego. It looks pretty full on actually, but it looks like a very faithful recreation. Most importantly, Emeralds, happy birthday for tomorrow." And honestly, do not worry about turning 22. Excuse me. For one thing, there's that Taylor Swift song that you can enjoy. And uh, it's even more appropriate that you should be feeling 22. I can't say the word 22 without trying to say 2022. Um, so that would be nice. And also, like, early 20s are fun. Just go for it. You know, like, turning 22... You're still a, a young buck. You're still a fresh chicken. Um, honestly, the, your 20s, you'll find, is actually a very long... It's, it's a long old decade. Um, so you've got plenty of time to enjoy it. This looks like hot garbage. This looks like absolute hammered shit. It's meant to look like this. And it will. But right now, this is what I talk about. Um, when I say that when you're painting models, there comes a stage, there comes a stage in every model's life where you think, fuck, that looks awful. Um, I can't even get the focus right. There we go. Um, and this is going to look awful for quite some time. Um, uh, but that's okay. The important thing is you push through it. So there we go. Uh. Lucantia says, I envy people born in 2000. What year is it? That's how old I am. I have to do math to figure out how old I am now. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'm increasingly getting to grips with the fact that there's a, a, a large section of society that thinks I am old. I don't feel it, to be honest. I'm quite happy being in my early 30s. Um, but yeah. It's, it's getting starker and starker, the sort of cultural touchstones that I have versus other people and sort of the drift is is real like I was talking to somebody recently and I was like blah 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 Jurassic Park and he was like yeah I think of that as an old movie and it's like oh no oh god oh <sighs> Anonymous says dungeon comes from is this going to be another another bloody um Another uh, Scandinavian. Dungeon comes from Don John, which is the central tower of a castle. They were repurposed as prisons once they became obsolete as fortresses. Examples include the Tower of London and the Bastille. Interesting. Scandinavian. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, Gary Cook says, Hi Johnny, just sent you a tweet with some photos of my current progress on my Blood Bowl teams. You inspired me to buy. You are a wonderful human being who is loved by everyone in my house. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you bloody love Blood Bowl. Because it's very good, and I like it a lot. Um. Do, do, do. Oh, this coat's going on well, possibly because I'm just slapping it on. It's a tiny bit careless, but it's just basing. Base, base layering on models is dull. It just is. But... Oh, fuck it. Let's do the whole trousers yellow. Why not, eh? Let's treat ourselves. Nice festive yellow trousers for the Troll Slayer. Oh, Joseph Dollery says, Hey, Johnny, just about to start a Blaze in the Dark campaign based on your reviews, and also you playing with Outside Extra, so thank you. Oh, I'm wonder like absolutely wonderful. That's delightful. I hope you uh, have a very good time. And uh, don't take too much stress. 
I haven't played Blades in ages. I haven't role played in ages actually, apart from uh, the Ox Venture. I need to fix that. I am rekindling one of the Deadlands campaigns I was running last year that sort of fizzled out. I need to just then rekindle the other one and the one I was playing in. <laughs> A lot of things stalled toward the end of last year, let's face it. But uh, I don't really blame anyone. The nice switch says famously festive colour yellow. It's a it's a jolly colour. It can be festive without being tied to a festival. You know, it's 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 cheer, cheerful. It's a cheery colour. The nice witch. Giving the light your fucking name there on you. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Paint some trousers. Is that a belt? Yes, that's a belt. We won't paint that yellow. Okay, there we go. Again, looks like bum, but we'll keep going. Nice which says, I'm here to only be contrarian and a pain in the ass. I don't know what you expected. Me neither, to be honest. Clearly I forgot something over the Christmas break. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, it's nice to be doing this again. I had a really nice break, but um, I was also starting to sort of itch to get back to just prattling around on online. And it's nice to not be exhausted. Um, it's really weird when I was making the thumbnail for this stream, I was doing it and I was like, ha ha ha, this is easy. It, I'm not manipulating this mouse and making an image doesn't make me bone tired. Um, so it's safe to say I managed to recharge my batteries over the last couple of weeks, which is a delight. Um, so yeah, looking forward to more of this same stuff in the years to come. Um, so here's the thing. I texted my friend about this the other day, um, because clearly I needed to get back to work and do something with my brain, but, right. Um, this is completely off topic, nothing, you know, this is completely random, but it has been bothering me for a few days. You know the ring, right? The Japanese film um, slash is it based on a um, is it based on a on a manga? I'm not sure. Somebody will know. I'm sure. But um, the film, The Ring, with Sadako, the, the girl who comes out of the telly. Right. The idea, if you needed a reminder, is that it's there's a, a video, uh, and it's very spooky, uh, and if you watch it, uh, you'll die in seven days if you don't make someone else watch it. Thereby, sort of getting the curse away from you um, and uh, onto someone else, right? <laughs> Another very current reference. Look, uh, shut up. Um, so, right, let's say, apparently it's based on a novel, thank you. And no, not The One Ring, everybody. Um, but just The Ring, not, not The One Ring. Um, if you show somebody that video, thereby saving yourself, and that person has seven days to make someone else watch it, or they get killed. If they just happen to die in the following seven seven days, what happens? Like, does Sadako, the girl, just go like, oh well, like, I'll chalk that one up as a win, that still counts. Or would she go after the previous person again? Or what happens? Like, does it still count? Is it is it a gimme? Addy, are you okay? Says loophole. Yeah, like, what happens? Michael Bethelson says she goes after the previous pe person, I believe. Radish just says you win some, you lose someone. Addy says she'll go back to the previous person. Is this... Rotten Luck says no, she'd leave them. It's back on you. Jan says this is a top-tier shower thought. Thank you very much. Um, the pair's vibing with it, because Space Hopper Copter's done a super sticker of the pair. The pair looks pretty stoned, actually. The pair's kind of like, one of his, one of their arms is hanging loose, and the other one's up here, there's kind of been like, with the text cool above their head. Um, Mabel Teacher says, who is she arguing that it still counts to? Well, I'm just saying if she, if there's a, t if there's a tally, you know? Rotten Luck says the curse is on the person. Hmm. 
Rotten Luck says I'm Googling this. Like, has it been shown? Because I know that, at least in Japan, there were a few more. There were, like, at least three Ring films. Were there any... Were there any others that sort of covered this? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop in a poll. I think I'm gonna make a little poll. So, what what happens then? Uh, Sadako still has work to do. Wait. There you go, there's a poll. Emma Benton says, is it like it follows rules where if they die, then you're back on the menu? No, I don't believe so. It's not like, it's not like Sadako goes back up. Which is, you know, nicer than it follows, but... Man, that film... That film stayed properly stayed under my skin for ages. So, so good. But um, 69% of people have voted for Sadako to get a day off. Nice. Peter Michigan has done a super chat saying, Happy New Year. Random question. Have you read the Witcher novels? I was a bit curious about this ever since the last season came out. I've read a couple. I've read the short story collection, which I quite enjoyed. And then I've read the first of the, like, series. Um, and they're... F I didn't love them, to be honest. They're fine. And I know some people absolutely adore them, but um, I didn't find them mega exciting, so I kind of stopped. Um, like, not knocking them or anything, but they just didn't quite grab my imagination in the way I hoped. Um, sort of quite slow-paced, I think. Basically, I realised that I really like the the way the the games do it and the sort of the atmosphere there and the way that's sort of also translated along with the books into the TV series. So I'm quite happy to enjoy it that way. Um, but yeah, the the books maybe I should give them another go. They're not massively for me. Uh, one other thing I've been really mean to give another go is uh, N.K. Jessamine's um, the fifth season and like those those books because I read the first one and bounced off it quite hard, but. The more time goes on, the more my friends, and a lot of them who don't read fantasy, are absolutely raving about them. So um, I should give those a go. I finished, oh my god, I finished The Expanse, the last Expanse book over um, over the break as well. And oh, that's just wonderful. Um, I, oh no, I finished it before the break, but I love that series. Tempted to go back to the start, to be honest. But All right. I'll end the poll. People seem to think the Sadako gets a day off, which is nice. So, uh, Adio UIK says, got to go all, heading back home and about to go underground. Take care, Addy. Safe journey home. I hope you have a lovely, lovely evening. Well, thank you, everyone, for helping... Um, thank you, everyone, for helping me solve that that question. It's been, it's been chipping away at me for a while. Uh, I'm going to text my friend Matt and tell him what you all said, basically. Well, not everything that you said. Radish says, does the day off count against her holiday allowance, though? Well, I guess she's still on the clock, technically. But, like, if the work's done already, then, you know, great. She's just... She's probably only an end-of-year bonus. But, yeah, she's... You know, if the work's already done, she hasn't doesn't have to keep that appointment, does she? So that's pretty de decent. Just, maybe she just takes a long lunch. Emma Benton says, I need to reinstall The Witcher 3. I bounced off it super hard, but figured now might be the time to go back. It is good fun. Um, the Nice Witch says, is it not just a hobby for Sadako anyway, or is it her actual career? Um, well, her actual career is just being dead down a well. Um, but then, I don't know. It's difficult. I mean, basically, my question is, how does she feel about doing all this? Because, you know, they say if you... If you do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Which just isn't true, P.S. But, um... Probably is a job, isn't it? Yeah, it's a job. She gives you delivery estimates. She calls you up and is like... 
your horrible demise will be with you in seven days. If you'd like to redirect your delivery, follow follow the, follow these instructions. Oh no, she's DPD. <laughs> she's UPS. She's FedEx. We've blown this wide open. Fucking hell. Anna Axelson says, most important question, are there ghost unions? I hope so. Can you imagine how pissed off you'd be if you spent your entire life, like, fighting for unions and fighting for better workers' rights and then you died and they were like, unions? No, mate, none of those. Ghosts are 100% scab. You'd be livid. Absolutely furious. Ghosts have health and safety concerns as well, like poltergeists. Surely, you know, that's a lot of heavy lifting. I mean, I guess I guess you wouldn't call it health and safety, would you? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Aiden Fox says if she was Hermes, there would be a good chance of her not finding you. <laughs> Very true. Or Yodel. Other other delivery companies are available. And they're almost universally better. <laughs> it's a low C99 is on Super Chat saying, some corrections for previous Star Wars facts. One, the Lasat were not rare during the era of the Clone Wars. Oh, oh, their planet was cleared by the Empire. Oh. Well, it certainly sounds like they're rare now. Poor Jaro Tapal and his lot. Nick Jeffries on another super chat saying, What do you call it when you're inflated <clears throat> what do you call it when you're invaded by a flock of French pigeons? A coup d'etat. Very good. Uh, Modern Caveman has done a super chat saying hello and happy new year Johnny and all LSPs just got here and going back to the start so I'll see myself here in about an hour. Good luck. It's been wild so far. Um, but yeah, uh, if if you are watching this in about an hour, uh, hello, welcome back. I hope I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you again for the super chat. It was lovely uh, and your support genuinely does mean a lot. Now let's continue to paint this weird golden brown colour on some dwarves. Oh, well, apparently the Lissat are uh, a pretty big plot in Rebels, if you're interested. I mean, I do have Disney+, Plus, so I could, you know, kind of watch... Is Rebels one of the animated ones? Or am I getting mixed up? Uh, to be honest with you, I've only watched like two episodes of The Mandalorian. I'm massively, massively behind. Maybe I'll... I'll try and catch up soon. Yeah, it is animated. Ah, thank you, B.U. Reynolds 376. Cedric Keeney says, Happy New Year, Johnny. Hello, Happy New Year to you too. I hope you had a lovely break. And I hope the year is going very well for you so far. Right. So, that's a lot of yellow coats. Now, we get to do it again. Because these are a bit patchy. It's a bit I didn't paint at all. It's a Loki 99 is on another super chat saying, uh, Dathomirian magic is not the only form of the Force not aligning with the right, uh, with the light or dark sides of the Force. Oh, for example, the Chiss have a form called Third Sight, which manifested as premonition. No, yeah. that's fascinating. Like the implications of that are vast. So obviously the you know the Jedi, despite the fact that only our Sith is meant to deal in absolutes. They are very much like, the Force is the Force, it surrounds all of us, it's with all of us, and you're either on the light side or the dark side. It's kind of amazing that there's more than one sort of uh, community that goes, yeah, well you could do it like this, you know? That's, that's, yeah. So, I mean, Star Wars is a lot at this point in terms of lore and implications. Um, but yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Aiden Folks is on a super chat saying, finally got a Series X and started Fallen Order. Oh yeah, it's really nice. I like that game a lot. Um, it's not without its little foibles, but all in all I'm enjoying it way more than I thought I would. And just the amount of effort that's clearly gone into it is great. So I'm looking forward to putting out new episodes of that on Saturday. 
um, because there was a a little break over New Year's because I was uh, not at my desk. So yeah, we're starting that up again on Saturday, so just a few days to wait, um, to just swing a lightsaber around and um, make fun of more ponchos, because Cal's dress sense is tragic. That's tragic as his, his friend Sears backstory, am I right? Me, 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 me. Um, Italo C99 is on another super chat saying, this third, third sight uh, nearly only occurs in girls, and only children, they lose their abilities as they age. The oldest, I think, was 17. Bloody hell. Imagine feeling like you've peaked as a teenager. You know? That's That's got to be tough to deal with. Happy birthday. What did you get? I lost my lost my connection to the third site. Oh, okay. Did you get anything else? Did you get anything nice? Oh, I got some jeans. Okay, are they, are they good? Yeah, they're all right. What do you want next year? My third site back. Oh, about that. About that. Arcadia says, so, poncho next Christmas, eh? Lol. I mean, I do actually, I've got a couple of friends that can really work a poncho. I, I don't think I'm, I don't think I am a poncho person. I do have a hoodie that's really more of a cloak, and that's great, but a poncho is another level, really. Ibril506 says the oldest was 22. Okay, well, I mean, that's not so bad. That still sucks. The Nice Witch says the only bit of Star Wars lore I care about is how if Ewoks want a mate, they build a little house for the Ewok they're interested in. Bloody hell. That's full on. I suppose, you know, there's plenty of space and no shortage of building materials on Endor, but... I'm sorry, but if I was if I were single and the only way to um to get a partner would be to to build them a house, I'm going to I'm going to stay single everyone. I'm going to build I'm going to build me a house. Uh Italo 99 says read the Thrawn trilogies, both of them, for more on Chiss and watch Clone Wars and Rebels. All right. I've heard great things about Clone Wars in fairness. Um, I know a lot of people regard it as like some of the best storytelling in all Star Wars, so I should uh, give it a bash. I'm trying to read more again this year, though. Um, I try and read as many books as possible over the course of the year, and I'm trying to write more. But maybe I'll just sleep less. Maybe I'll just do less of that. Jack Wood says Clone Wars slaps. Well, there you go. Aiden Folk says I paid someone else to build me a house. Wow. So you could steal their partner? How does that work? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Titan Uranus says the irony is that they never fuck outdoors on Endor. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Uh... Yeah. We're starting we're starting chat off in 2022 exactly where we left it last year in the gutter and that's not a criticism i'm very i'm as much to blame for that as anyone else if not more but uh let's let's call it what it is <laughs> right one more tori anderson says happy new year's johnny hope you and the fam had a good one it was lovely thank you um yeah, we sort of had quite a chill new year, but uh, the break overall has been very nice. Very, very nice indeed. We got Watson an absolutely enormous new bed. It's like a person-sized bean bag, but it's just for her, and she loves it, and it's great. It's also quite high, which is I think she really likes. She doesn't like being on the floor. I think she prefers being sort of on a level with us, but still having her own space. So it was a genius purchasing decision on the part of my wife, who is very good at these things. That was the best gift to all of us, actually. Okay. Jack Wood says, You started this community, Johnny. You knew what you were getting into. Yeah, but, like, it's one thing to know, and it's another thing to see it happen. Like, even I didn't think we'd be talking about butts this much. You know? Just curious. Don't 
Tony Doak says, we never left the gutter, we just got it washed. <laughs> And Kalak Fergak says, uh, how is Watson today? She's good. She's um, having a nap, I think, at the moment. I think she's curled up with my wife. Um, she's very good. She ran around today um, with a big old stick. There was one that was too big, but she was determined to carry it, and I had to tell her to leave it. Uh, it's a lovely 99 has done another super chat, saying the first trilogy is the heir to the Empire books and are legends, not canon. The second is the Thrawn trilogy and is canon and feeds into Rebels. They have blue skin and red eyes. Yeah, okay. I forgot, yeah, because there used to be the extended... Was it the extended universe? Expanded universe? There, basically, there was a lot of Star Wars stuff that was canon until it wasn't. Emma Benton says, Watson is the best branch manager. I heartily agree. Although today she um, she cut her, her lip a tiny bit. She actually had a wart on her lip, and uh, today it came off on the branch. She was She was savaging. Uh, but she didn't even notice, so she's okay. She's fine. Right. We're changing colours now on the palette. I'm not going to be a different colour. I will always be extremely pale. But I'm going to start working this um, sort of deep terracotta red onto the model now to try and kind of get those bits painted, basically. Burrito's done another super chat, saying, what was that nice gift you got across the holidays and or what was your favourite thing to eat and drink? Oh, what was a nice gift you got across the holidays? Um, so one of the nicest things uh, my family did this year was we agreed, I think for the second or third year running, to do a Christmas present amnesty. Uh, basically, the rules are, we're all really fucking busy, let's just not do presents. Um, and it's great, because it was like, oh, thank God, the stress is gone. We don't have to get one another every, anything. We all love each other, and we've kind of just all agreed that we were all very busy and tired, so we didn't get each other anything, which is very nice. So, um, uh, but my wife got me some really nice speakers uh, for Christmas, uh, which of course then meant that uh, I just had to invest in it in a high fi and a preamp. So now we've gone from having like a stereo that I have had since 2007... Uh, and I got second hand because it used to be my brother's. He must have got it in about 2004. Um, so we got rid of that and now we've got um, just a really nice sound system. Uh, and it sounds incredible. Like I got goosebumps when I played it the first time. So that was pretty rad, if I'm honest. Uh, it was very, very exciting. Um, and that was, you know, that's that's my Christmas present. Oh, but also my wife got me a book that I had asked for in Venice. Uh, but also tickets to tour an old disused underground station that still has, like, old adverts in it um, before it gets demolished later this year. So that's exciting. Uh, so, yeah, it was, like, basically it was a year of few presents, but every present absolutely fucking nailed it, which is great. So there we go. Uh, and what was a, your favourite thing to eat and drink? Uh, oh, gosh. We had a lot of cheese. We had a lot of cheese over Christmas. Um, further evidence, if anyone needed, that um, my veganism isn't going great right now. Uh, I made mac and cheese and then topped it with, like, stuffing out of a packet. That was pretty good. Uh I had some good roast potatoes, just generally, just, it was, you know, uh, it was a nice food time. And we didn't overdo it to the point where, like, we had loads and loads of leftovers. We managed to get through all the leftovers in a couple of days, which was good. So, there. Oh, wait, and uh, our, our neighbours, who are lovely, they knew we were isolating because of COVID, and, you know, we were all being very, very careful. But then they tested as well, and they were meant to go away for Christmas so suddenly they had no decorations or anything and they were like oh like we're just stuck here for Christmas so um we got them a little something we put like a hamper on their doorstep um and then they made us a cheesecake <laughs> uh, which was fucking delicious and then we sent them shots on Christmas day we we're basically just sending each other nice little gifts while we all stayed in our respective plague homes that was good fun so it was, a, it was a weird Christmas, but a nice Christmas. Anyway, right, let's sort the focus out on this. 
There we go. I think I need my eyes tested. I think my eyes are getting a little bit worse, which is fine. The prescription hasn't changed in like the best part of 10 years, but it is a little bit annoying. So yeah, that's the terracotta going on. <sighs> Moriax42 says, now you're stuck in an arms race of niceness. I know, right? Well, we haven't given the plate back, so hopefully that's going to break, break the chain. <laughs> They're going to have to be like, where's our fucking plate? And we'll be like, suck it, nerds. We won't. We'll give them the plate back. Nice which says, now you need to build your neighbours a new house. I don't want to. A, I'm not looking to, to enter into a, a polyamorous relationship with them. Um, but also, like, I like having them as neighbours. I'm not going to buy them a new house. I like you so much you're not going to be my neighbour anymore. It's rubbish. Oh, apparently I have to. Okay, well. <laughs> Button says, not buy, Johnny, build. Oh, that's fine. If I build them one, they won't want to live in it. It will just be a a, a lean-to in the, in the nearest forest or wood. To build a crap lean-to when I walk Watson next. I'll be like, ta-da! And they will say, no thanks. Yeah, that'll fuck them. Mm -mm. Oh, it's nice painting again. I didn't do loads of it over the holidays. I kind of, in the run up to Christmas until about the 23rd, I was actually at my desk quite a lot because I was playing a lot of Halo with my friends. And then we were all like, that'll do. Let's, let's, let's do Christmassy things now. So we all, you know, went, uh, went off and did festive things. So I've not been in this room even very much. So I haven't painted a great deal. Probably dis I probably last painted actually on the 23rd when I finished up the um, College of Shadows team. I'll show you them, actually, because that's... Because um, it's been about six minutes since we last talked about asses, so... Ooh. So I've based them now, but uh, the College of Shadows team is uh, Skaven. Uh, what is wrong with my fucking camera focus this week? So it's Ratman, and I put them on sort of nice temple bases. And uh, elves with, you guessed it, ba 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 butts. There we go. So that's the College of Shadows team. Um, Emma Blast says, good, I arrived just in time for butts. It's kind of just been a constant. Uh, so that's sort of how the two teams are going to stack up. I wanted to choose colours that were dis different but like vaguely complementary. So yeah. So that's looking. The nice switch says, yes, look at that butt. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. Right, I wonder. Oh, my F stop's really low. That'll do it. Is that too dark? No. I don't think that's too dark. Yeah, there we go. Now the... Mm, it's a little bit dark, isn't it? Is that better? It looks a bit better. You can kind of see the models a bit better. Maybe if I... No, we still want to keep that going. For fuck's sake. Ah, oh, my ISO is auto. Well, that's fine then. Okay. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, paint. Paint more things. Paint more things on the things. Got it. Thanks, chat. Rotten Luck says, how many pelvises do centaurs have? 
Oh god. I suppose they have. It depends where you cut off. Well, rotten luck. Welcome to the next twenty minutes of this this stream. Uh, I would argue that centaurs have one, and it's the equine one, because I feel like they get cut off just just above the hips. I did see somebody say that they've got um, six legs or six limbs and um, sort of segmented bodies, which technically means they're insects. Um, Hermit Prime has preempted what I was going to say next by asking what's inside their upper rib cage. Um, I uh, I think that centaurs have two sets of lungs, which obviously has nightmarish sort of. Um, just it just it sounds horrible. Like, I mean, they could probably hold their breath for ages because one of those sets of lungs is going to be massive as well. But like, they've got they've definitely got two rib cages, so you kind of assume that they have the organs inside both. So they've got a horse set of organs and a human set of organs. So they've got two hearts. What about their in what about their intestinal tracts? Tony Dykes says, how many stomachs? That's a great question. Hmm. Hmm. How many stomachs does a horse have? <laughs> I don't know. I just... Like, you see a centaur, right, in an illustration or in some some marble that we stole from Greece and won't give back um, and just keep in, in the British Museum. And you're like, oh, I get it. That's a man on top of a horse. Okay. Like, you can talk to that bit. That bit can run very fast. Great. But the minute you get into the actual anatomy below the surface of the skin... Oh, B. Reynolds 376 says, horses have only one stomach. Okay, cool. But when do they join, right? Like... Because I think we can all agree that a centaur, if it's there, like, nom, 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 eating some grapes or a Big Mac or some hay or whatever, like, it's got to go down their esophagus. It's got to go through the diaphragm. It stands to reason there's a stomach there. Is there then an intestinal tract? So does it basically process everything before it goes into the horse stomach? Or does the human stomach just go into the horse stomach? And then the horse stomach is actually the proper intestine bits that turn it into poop? Sleep agent says, what do they eat? Horse food or human food? There are many troubling implications about centaurs, you know? Aiden Folk says, are they omnivores? I think I think they are omnivorous. Because there are talks, there are like, there's reference to like the leopards and the centaurs feasting together. And then a centaur, it's what's, it's what's, um, Depicted in the Parthenon marbles, or the Elgin marbles, if you want to call it that way. Dr. Brangar says, according to Greek myth, centaurs eat shit tons of booze. Yeah, they, 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 um, yeah, they definitely were at a feast, and then, like, one of the centaurs was like, that woman's so attractive, I'm going to grab her and run. But, um, Brad C says, Johnny, do you usually wear glasses? You look different today. Good luck, friend. I do, but I'm short sighted, so it doesn't help me to wear them while I'm painting miniatures. Talking about centaurs, for this long doesn't help either. It really distracts me, but I just need to know. West Coast Weaver says, I assume human stomach, but also horse cecum -ce -ce for optimal plant digestion. T. Bailey says, human stomach takes up the entire human abdominal cavity. The intestines are in the horse bits, maybe. That's what I think as well. Jack Wood just says, livers. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Also, no, the blad. I don't think. I don't think the human bladder enters into it. But livers, yeah, absolutely. Like the, um, yeah, you'd have a human liver and a horse liver. Glenn Robertson says checking out for tea, Johnny, and it's not just. It's not because talking about hay and booze makes me hungry. <laughs> Lucy says, where does the heart go? 
I think they they do have a they must have a horse and a human heart, which is terrifying because it presumably means that if one if you shot them through one of their hearts, the other half would still be alive. So you'd have a human just kind of waggling around, like a wacky, waveable, inflatable arm man, sent like tethered to a dead horse. Or you'd have a dead horse running around with... Uh, sorry, you'd have a horse running around with a dead human on, t on the top and kind of just waggling around. But then... Hmm. But then what about then? I guess you wouldn't, because then the nerve endings would still come from the head. It's difficult. It's difficult. Ethan Blomquist says, whoa, what did I miss? I zoned out looking at reports for work and I came back to you'd have a human liver and a horse liver. We're just trying to work out what, what guts uh, centaurs do and don't have. Um, and I forget why. But I, I desperately need to know. <sighs> Dr. Brangle says, no, not the half-alive bit, just shared load. Like, if you lose one lung or kidney, you still function just way worse. Okay, yeah, fair. It's like um, the first sort of, like, medically recorded, you know, proper, you know, like, do well-documented uh, instance of uh, conjoined twins. Um, they were actually, they actually weren't that conjoined. Like, they could have been separated nowadays by a very simple procedure, but obviously medical science wasn't that advanced when they were alive. And though these, uh, they were brothers, uh, though these men had, you know, like, they uh, had fulfilling lives. They both married, um, for instance. Um, and they used to sleep in sort of like a massive bed with a curtain, I think. Um, what they did share was a vascular system. So um, very, very tragically, basically when one of the uh, brothers passed away, the other one effectively bled to death because his, his vascular system was sending blood out into his twin's brother uh twin's body but his twin's brother wasn't sending it back so he just he yeah he basically bled out uh, which was a lot when you think about it but uh so there's that that casual dra dragon says didn't their wives hate each other maybe that was fictional i think i have heard that but i don't know if it's true or not but um anyway so yeah i do th it probably is just a shared system in a centaur Ebro 506 says, wasn't it part of a liver that they shared? Yes, that's right. I remember now. Anyway. <laughs> Nick Green says, according to Farscape, that famous academic journal, if centaurs have two hearts like Luxons, they can survive in space for a while, so centaurs would be the perfect astronauts. Wow. That's something I didn't think I'd say out loud today. Hmm. Uh, anyway, yeah, centaurs. What a bunch of scamps. We should give those marbles back. <laughs> what, whatever will we talk about next? Who even knows? What time is it? It's 23 minutes past five. I'm going to take a five to seven minute break in a little bit. Because I could do with wetting my whistle. And uh, who knows? Maybe some of you need to stretch or... Uh, grab a jumper or a blanket or, you know, do whatever it is you need to do over the course of a five to seven minute break. You know the drill by now. It's exciting. Our first five to seven minute break of 2022. WhoMD21 says, do centaurs store food like camels store water? No, they probably have fridges or at least cupboards. Um... Dr. Brangar says, uh, where's it gone? Marbles, bronzes, and more just empty the British Museum. Yep. Although the Anglo-Saxon stuff is good, and that, that in fairness, is from here. So I like looking at that bit, because it's also stuff I studied at uni. But, uh, yeah, apart from that...
All right. <laughs> Danny42 says, but what about when centaurs want to build houses for one another? Actually, I don't want to know. Never mind. Yeah, right. Also, can horses go downstairs? Do centaurs all have to live in um, bungalows? Hmm. <laughs> Reese Reese Jones says, "I bet centaurs stay warm with their centaural heating system." Fucking hell. Okay, Emma Blass says, "Horses can, cows won't." Okay. Wow. What's with the attitude, cows? They're just stairs. In fairness, we try and carry the dog downstairs because her breed is prone to joint issues later in life and we don't want her to basically wear out her knees. <laughs> but then Watson is considerably lighter than a, an entire cow, so... Chris Ashworth has done <laughs> super chat saying, I came to say hi, I'm leaving because of the puns. <laughs> fair, fair cop, Chris. That's a, that is entirely fair. Sorry, just replying to a message. Um, <laughs> go well, Chris. I'm sorry about the puns. <laughs> Claire de Bear says, I love the LSPs and Johnny on these streams. It's pub chat, but without the booze or the pressure of going out. <laughs> yeah, we really do talk like we're having a lock-in, don't we? Right then, chat. If you were being made into a new type of centaur, but horses were already taken, uh, what lower body are you going to take? Personally, I wouldn't mind going with Gorilla. One sec, let's go mute my mic. Okay, my wife didn't like that idea. <laughs> Jack Wood says snake. Oh yeah. Very um very XCOM. Baddy wrong legs says horse but human feet. I mean what a perfect username for this question. Baddy wrong legs. Wow. Nice witch says, I've got a dip, dip for the evening. So nice to see you back, Johnny. I'm glad you had a good, if strange Christmas break. Take care, skellies. Uh, take care, nice witch. I hope you have a lovely, lovely evening. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash the e nice witch. The nice witch um, is nice witch's channel. You should, uh, you should check her out. Give her a follow. Subscribe even. Because uh, she's, she's mint and she's much better at Tetris than me. There, I said it. Um, Brad C says Mark Wahlberg wow Mabel Teacher says ragdoll cat you'd be so comfy all the time Eric Simpson says croc Benny42 says I mean some kind of ape may be good then I can actually climb properly which would be too fun right that's, what, that's why I want to be I want a gorilla on the bottom you could go really fast you'd also be really strong I mean even like, oh, I'm just nipping to the shops. You could nip to a shop that's like 10 miles away in no time at all and then carry loads back with you. Claire de Bear says, Tiger. Hermit Prime says, have you heard of a water bear? Is that a, um, shit, what are they called? Are they the tiny little organisms that are technically immortal? God, what are they called? I can't remember. Uh, ooh, Jesse Cat Production says, Wolf. That's a good one. T Beard says, would the human half protrude from the gorilla's shoulders? Yeah, basically. So sort of like tardigrade, that's it. Thank you, Mabel Teachers. Um uh, Yes, I have heard of a of a water bear, if that's what one of those is. Um 
Yeah, I think basically if we were talking about an ape, you'd get ape up to like sort of about, well, yeah, it would just cut, it would come out the shoulders basically. Uh, a chartreuse goose says octopus, uh, octopus, octopus or goose, both terrifying, uh, in their own way. I like it. Absolutely terrifying. Hermit Prime says just a regular sized tardigrade. <laughs> uh. A random lady says, I was about to say giraffe, but then I imagined it, and I'm sure this image will haunt my nightmares. Goodness me. You'd be so lonely up there. You'd just be like, hello. Hiya. Oh. Jazzy B says, lower body and eagle. Would you have <laughs> Would you have the wings, Jazzy B? Are you imagining those? Like, are you imagining those as part of your build, or are you just going to have eagle feet? I'm not, knock I'm not knocking just having eagle legs and tail feathers, obviously. And a cloaca. How long did it take? 17 hours and 31 minutes into the third day of this new year, and we've already said cloaca on, on the stream. Just talons, says Jazzy B. Classy! I like it. Strutting your stuff. Ruining, ruining soft wooden floors. Love it. Shannon Bennett says, Dear, just for the sheer aesthetic, I think that would be adorable. I think that's a very good choice. Nathan says, What's this we, Johnny? All right, fair enough, Nathan. I for Brandon has done another super chat saying, Now I want to read a light novel called My Neighbour is a Centaur. I'd like to be a bear centaur. Oh, that would be great. You'd be so tall. There wouldn't be a shelf in the world you couldn't reach. Can you pass me that thing, please? Yes, I am a bear centaur. You could get a job at your local hardware store. And it would be weird. All right, just replying to a message. All good. Jack Wood says, hear me out, full on Quaylag. Quaylag, why does that ring a bell? Qua oh no, oh no. Jack. I, oh. Oh. Revolver Ox says, if you went for Giant Scorpion, your tail could actually do something. True enough. Keep Calm and Reload says, but would the animal half, would the, sorry, would the human half decide the size or would the animal size? Because that would be important. The way I see it is, um, is that it is the size of the animal you're talking about. So if you're, if, if we're talking a bear, then you are very high up when you, you go up there, you know? Um... So I, th I think it is the the animal that dictates the size. Now, Arthur Rich says, uh, hello, everyone. How are we all doing? And what are you painting this fine day, Johnny? Hello. We're all doing fine, I think. We've covered a lot of topics so far on stream, many of them disturbing, a lot of them at least somewhat butt-related. Um, plus ça change. Uh, I am painting some dwarves for uh, Games Workshop's Dungeon Bowl. Here is one of them in progress, and here is what they ought to look like once I have put it in focus, that's what they're going to end up looking like. Sort of lemony, terracottery, punchy dwarves. Just Man Bun is fine says, but is your human part human sized? Yes. Absolutely. Because, um, so, right, this is a weird thing. Um, in D&D, don't they say that centaurs are like six foot tall? Which means that the horse halves have to be really short, right? That's always been weird to me. I for Brennan has done another super chat saying, Holy Ursa Major Batman, I'd be a literal bye bear. <laughs> very, very strong. I 
I know that this is how you know people like Dr. Moreau get started, but the, the implications of, of whacking half a human onto half an animal are fascinating. Dr. Brangard says centaurs are also medium-sized like almost PC races. Right, yeah. It's like they're tiny ponies. I thought they were meant to be like towering, towering beasts. Well, not beasts, but you know what I mean. But no, they go, they're running around like they're about to give a child a ride at the seaside for two quid. Do, do, do. Who's messaging? There we go. Petrolia says, if a horse has a height of 1.6 metres, that means the size of the back shoulder slash shoulder add about 50 centimetres for the human torso, and that adds up to about 2 metres or 6 foot, yeah? Human, tors human torsos are bigger than half a metre. Surely. <laughs> Claire DeVere says, Dwarven X-Men. Oh, God, it is quite X-Men, this, isn't it? Oh, if I'd thought about that, I would have pushed the colours a bit harder. Dang. Oh, well. Okay, apparently medium-sized creatures can be tall. Dragonborn can be about 10 foot, so why not 10 foot centaur? All right, fair enough, Arcadia, yeah. A human torso is a meter, says Dr. Brangar. Is mine? Probably. I don't know. Um... um... Flurgle Hinge says Hippopotamus. You'd be able to, to again, that's a one where you can run really bloody fast, because hippos can move on land and in the water. They're quite terrifying, actually. Hippo, hippopotami. I don't think you'd get let into many pubs for that very reason, though. You know, all restaurants or really anywhere, they'd be like, oh, excuse me, um, thank you for your patronage, but you can't stay. You're terrifying. <laughs> Cheerful Spider says, how about top half is a human, bottom half is a centaur? Oh no. Oh no. How many navels would you have as a centaur? Where would the umbilical go? Would it go into your human tummy or your horse tummy? Or both? Hmm. Hmm. Emma Blast says, but it's really the head part of the hippopotamus that is most threatening. Yeah, but a hippopotamus centaur could have a gun, Emma. That's pretty threatening. Hmm. Anyway, right. Um, <laughs> I think we should take a little a little break because <laughs> I need to rinse out my brain. Um, uh, so, Beaver ninety eight says, "Hey, hello, Johnny and Skelly friends. Hope the holidays were good for you. They were lovely. Thank you. I'm sorry that you arrived just in time for the break, but we are going to take a five to seven minute break. So, do you need to um, do you need to go to the toilet? Uh, do you, are you comfortable? Are you warm enough? Are you hydrated? Um, if there's anything you need to do over the next five, seven minutes, um, go do it, and I'll, I'll meet you back here. Um, conversely, excuse me, if you uh, aren't going anywhere because you don't need to do anything right now, don't worry. Um, you're going to have a look at uh, my dog. There'll be a picture of my dog and some smooth jazz. So please enjoy both of those things. See you back here in five to seven minutes while I just ban a presumed, presumed porn bot. Nearly made that an admin, that would have been, or a moderator, that would have been disastrous, wouldn't it? Anyway, right, uh, yeah, see you back here in five, seven minutes. Uh, love you all lots. Um, ca catch you then.
Hello everybody, welcome back to the live stream where we all are. I missed a super chat um, from Nick Jeffrey saying, instead of a picture of your dog and some smooth jazz, I want a picture of some jazz and your smooth dog. Well, there was a picture of my smooth dog. Um, she's very smooth, and lots of you are now talking about what chimera you would make out of the dog. And a lot of you were saying um, wings, so she had, like, velvety wings. Hmm. I can kind of see that. God, it, she'd be a nightmare if she could fly. Please, no one put wings on my dog. She'd be an absolute nightmare. Um, mm, 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 did I miss anything else? I don't think so. Okay. No, we're good. Uh, just another broke nerd says, Happy New Year, Johnny. I hope you found the holiday break to be relaxing. I did. Have you talked to your PC friend about a new setup? I have. Is it harder in the UK to get PC stuff right now? I've just gone for a, a build, uh, like a pre-built PC, which I think makes it easier to get hold of stuff, because I do know that people are still struggling to get graphics cards. Um, but I've managed to put in an order, and it should be arriving toward the end of the month, which is very exciting. Um... So yeah, I'm looking forward to being able to play games um, and stream them without my computer falling over and getting upset with me. Because I'll finally be able to stream Vermintide 2 with Samantha Greer, um, maybe even loop back around to Forza, could do some Halo, could do anything, as long as it's available on, on PC. <laughs> well, I also have a PS5, but you know what I mean. So yeah, but in the meantime, it's a Monday, so we're painting. I'm going to make these doors look all red and yellow. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. Tony Doke is on Super Chat saying, at this point, the Sewing Life Alchemist could... Uh, take some tips from the LSPs. What's the Sewing Life Alchemist? I am afraid that reference has sailed over my head. Let me Google that. Sewing Life Alchemist. Ah, Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. Shoe Tucker. Sewing Life Alchemist. Oh. Yeah, I think... Sounds like uh, the LSPs would come in handy here. I'm sorry I didn't get that reference. Mm -mm -mm. Okie dokie. Tony Rose says, and what are LSPs? Lovely skeleton pals. See you lot. Um... Since our very first stream, we decided to start calling the community Lovely Skeleton Pals while playing Loop Hero. So you're all lovely skelly friends. Because you know what? There may be differences between us, but we all have skeleton ton ton tons. Mm -mm -mm. Monster Noodle has done a super chat saying, I just woke up and it's dark. Confusion! Happy New Year, Johnny. Hope you've had a great Christmas. I have. Thank you. It's been lovely. Um, I'm very pleased to be back at work um, and uh, just plugging away at things. Um, I'll tell you what is lovely, actually, of just um, doing the Patreon stuff and working for myself, etc., etc., is that historically, you know, like when I was working at Eurogamer and to a lesser extent, vaguely, when I was working at Dicebreaker... Um, January was always a very, very slow month, and it was difficult because you come back being like, all right, I've rested, I've got actual energy to do stuff. What's coming up? Nothing. Oh. Um, that was always challenging. Um, but because I set my own agenda now, uh, it's business as usual, which is very, very nice. Um, because it's very difficult when you uh, have the energy to make something and then nothing to work with. I remember those months being very, very difficult at times. So um, shout out to all those content creators who are following the sort of the games release schedule and, and 
the calendar, capital T, capital C. They are bold pioneers, one and all. I'll put some music back in my ears. Here we go. There we go. These are coming together slowly. Good, good, good. How many have we done now? Oh, we've done that. Okay, so we've actually might need to do a slight second coat on this um, this stuff, but we're almost through with painting the terracotta, which is great because then we just need to do sort of the leather bits and the hair, and then we can layer up the skin and shade these little bastards, which will be great. David says, is that dwarf dabbing? Which one? This, Not this one. That one's sort of... No, he's not dabbing. Where was the... Was it this one? Oh, yeah! Yes. Yeah, it looks like he is, isn't it? I'm not... I almost dabbed then. No. Um, hmm... Benny42 says, I'm wondering if I should get into games journalism for when I can actually get a job. Was it any good? Uh, it was great. Um, I, it was, you know what, actually the hardest part of stepping away from uh, being a company and um, uh, starting my own thing is that I, I probably can't call myself a journalist anymore. Uh, I loved being a journalist. Um, I did it for 13 years. Um... In, in all honesty, I kind of wish I had stayed at Eurogamer. Um, I loved working at Dicebreaker, but uh, tabletop journalism, it turns out, wasn't wasn't really... I didn't enjoy it as much as video games journalism, but um, it's good fun. I will say, Benny, it doesn't pay great. It's a lot of work, and it's exciting. Like, you know, it's a job that's taken me all over the world, and I've, I've uh, met some incredible people and done some amazing things that I never would have been able to do otherwise. But one of the sacrifices for that is that you just don't earn much. Um, so it's definitely a... There's a sacrifice there. But uh, it's definitely, you know... You get into it for the love of it, really. And it is it is good fun. I wouldn't... If I could go back, I wouldn't change it. I would still do what I did. Um, but, yeah. <sighs> Nathan says, shouldn't call yourself a journalist, not can't. Thank you, that's very kind. I've kind of, mm, I do sort of still refer to myself as a journalist. It's difficult, but, you know. Um, I'm definitely more on the entertainment side of things these days, but that's okay. It is fine, I enjoy it. But, yeah. I think that's the first time I've said out loud on a stream that I wish I'd stayed at Eurogamer, and I hope it doesn't put anyone out. It's not meant to be me passing judgment on Dice Break or anything. Um, it was an incredible opportunity to get to found something like that, and um, it's lovely to see it continuing under its own steam now I'm gone. Uh, it was just... Uh, I, I missed games journalism, basically. But yeah, there we go. So anyway, but <laughs> Aiden Folk says, is hungover Mario Kart journalism? Absolutely. Of course it is. Some of the best journalism I've ever done. Mostly because I generally won against the others at Hungover Mario Kart. Ginger Pickle McPickle says, you find out what you love by doing what you don't. There you go, yeah. It was quite refreshing, actually. I felt like when I left Eurogamer for Dice Break, I was like, oh, I'm done with games journalism. You know, like, I've done it for so long, I need to change. And then I um, was like, oh, oh, no, I, I, I did love it. <laughs> oh, okay. So there we go. Uh, just a casual reminder to, um, to everybody in the chat, my pronouns are they, them, not he, him. 
Thank you very much. Um, easy mistake to make her, because I am very mask presenting. But um, I am non-binary. Corey Haynes says, hoping this stream can cheer me up after playing Firewatch. Ha <laughs> ha. God, that's a good game, isn't it? I don't think I ever finished it, but it's phenomenal. Um, really gripped me in a very strong way. Wraith Shadowheart has done a, a super chat saying, write an article once a year, bam, journalist. <laughs> there you go. I do kind of miss reviewing, actually. I kind of... In an ideal world, I would find some time to still review games for outlets. Um, it's something I've thought of, but I still I feel like I've still got a bit of work to do on the Patreon in terms of balancing it, so that the tiers are right and that I am not doing too much or too little work. Um, uh, incidentally, thanks to, uh, to everyone who replied to the uh, request I put out for feedback on the Patreon. It was actually largely very positive, which was a big relief. Um, but yeah, the you know we've not even been doing the Patreon thing for a whole year, so I feel like there are still some tweaks to be made. But ultimately, would I like to start reviewing on sites like Eurogamer again? Absolutely. Um, uh, some, of the, some of the reviews I did for Eurogamer were some of the most rewarding work I've ever done and it was nice to be given the chance to do it to be honest I've worked in jobs before where they're like no you're a video person you push the video buttons that's what you do and they made it very clear that our editorial voices weren't that welcome it's like oh okay alright well I think I've got things to say but that's fine so yeah um Eurogamer helped me grow a lot as a writer. It is nice. Nathan says, are you going to follow up on the suggested feedback regarding the Wargaming channel then? I would rename that in a heartbeat if I didn't think it would confuse people when they first joined the server. Moriax42 says, would you ever move into independent journalism as Chris Bratt did? Uh, I don't think I've got the chops for it, to be perfectly honest with you. I think Chris and, Chris and Annie and Quinn's, like... What they do on PMG is amazing. I think um, Chris's drive to find good stories and tell interesting stories in a, in a in an engaging and unique way is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it's not something I have the energy or the drive to do personally. I just don't think I could do it. Um, so I'm happy to stay in my lane, as it were, um, and sort of play to my own strengths. So there. I miss working with Chris, though. He's bloody wonderful. Uh. John Freeman says, Do Eurogamer take on articles from independents? Yeah. Yeah, they, they pick up freelance reviews all the time. Um, so if they'd have me, there, there wouldn't necessarily be anything stopping me from reviewing for them, but um, again, it's about balancing time, isn't it? We'll see. <laughs> Moriax42 says, a video of you two playing Crusader Kings 2 is still phenomenal. We had fun with that. We had a lot of fun with Crusader Kings 2. I really enjoyed doing uh, the Banner Saga as well with Chris. Just good fun. Do, 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 do. Okay, it's another one done there. Right, I'm just going to go back all over all of them and see if they need a second coat. A little bit. Arcadia says lots of channels do sponsors. Would you do sponsors too, or not your kind of thing? Um. To be honest with you, I've just not really been approached by anyone. Uh, I got approached once to possibly do a sponsored stream, um, but uh, it, I, I turned it down um, for reasons. Uh, I'm not against it, um, but it would have to be the right sort of um, the right sort of thing. Like I'm. No disrespect to those who are sponsored by, say, for example, energy drinks or stuff like that, but that's just not me. It would have to be something that I would actually recommend anyway. So, um, 
But to be honest with you, like, no one's come calling, and I don't mind. It's fine. Just sort of quite happy doing my own thing. I mean, if I could be sponsored by, like, Kettle Chips or Monster Munch or something, just get sent some crisps, that would be... No God, I'm setting my sights high, aren't I? Oh, I'd like a bag of crisps. <laughs> oh, dear. But uh, sponsored work is can be can be rewarding in a kind of like we got the job done well, um, uh, sort of scenario. But um, it can also be very stressful and a lot of work. So I'm not in a rush to go back to it. I made quite a lot of sponsored videos when I was at Dicebreaker, including a lot about Magic the Gathering, which is a game I I don't play. I actually enjoyed making those videos because it was interesting looking at card synergies, but. Also, it's not something I would have made off my own back, and that was a bit like, Meh. so. Sega Genesis says, Johnny would hate a Games Workshop sponsorship. Well, so, this is the thing. I used to be on the press list for Games Workshop when I was at Dicebreaker, and they would send me new releases. Um, and it was fun, and it was interesting. I mean, it got me into Blood Bowl, because they sent me a review copy of, of Blood Bowl. But also, sometimes you get so much that I'd be like, oh no, there's all this stuff and I wouldn't know what to do with it, I wouldn't be able to use it in time, and it was actually quite a lot of pressure, and especially since I'm a one-person um, operation now and I couldn't just go, does anyone else want to look at this? I'd just like, I'd get an absolutely huge stack of, um, huge stack of stuff to paint. And I think that would be very stressful. So, yeah. <sighs> Jazzy, Jazzy B says, no, great, now I really want crisps. Sorry. Yeah, I really love crisps. Hmm. We got some pistachio nuts in the cupboard, I think. I bought those for Christmas and then didn't touch them. I'll have some of those later. Delicious. Oh, it's going to be nice to have a little sort of evening after doing some work. This is a nice feeling again. Obviously, between Christmas and New Year, everything just becomes a sort of endless void of time. But I've, I will have done some work and I'll be able to not do the work, and I'll just uh, uh, have a nice evening off. It'd be pleasant. I'll tell you what I did uh, do over the, the holidays. I played a shitload of Deathloop. I think I'm getting near the end now. When I look at all the visionary leads, I've done most of them. Um, I think I've only got two left to complete, which I think means we'll sort of move toward an end game state. Uh, it's been quite good fun. Uh, don't I wouldn't say it's my game of the year for last year. But um, it is very good. And I love Colt and Juliana. I love the way they talk to one another. I think they're just brilliant. Um, just another broke nerd says, Johnny, what are you drinking? Sorry if already asked. I joined pretty late. No, no, no one's asked. Uh, oh, I got some paint on it. It's, it's, it's an old crafty hen. Uh, this is a dark and multi oak aged ale. The other ales are available. But I, I drink that one and sometimes and it's nice. As you can see, the, yeah, the sponsors, sponsors aren't lining up at the door, so. Um, Gaz says, I just finished Deathloop yesterday. Oh, congratulations. I'm a bit stuck on one of the, one of the um, leads, actually. Um, it's about finding the passwords, and I need to explore one of the stations, but when I change the power to that station, to Yassin Station, and then go to Updarm, it doesn't give me the option to go explore. It doesn't sort of say, this is how you advance the quest. Um, it just tells me to loop and start again, which is really weird. Uh, Burrito's done a super chat saying, you heard it here first. Look, Johnny's looking to be bought out by Big Kettle Chip. Actually, you know what? If Jalapeno Cheetos wanted to, wanted to sponsor me and just ship them over from the States because you can't get them here, that would be dandy. That would be delightful. Um, Alison Vassabar is on a super chat uh, saying, Hey Johnny, just saying hi and hope everyone is doing well. Very well, thank you, Alison. It's lovely to see you. 
Um, I hope you're very well. Melanie Sood says, what's a monster munch? Oh, goodness me. It's great. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a type of crisp um, in the UK. Um, they are little sort of baked corn snacks. Um, and they are like, they're like little monster. There's a little circle and then there's like four little bits that shoot off. So it either looks like a monster's hand or from this way, it's like, oh, it's like a monster with arms and legs. That looked vile, didn't it? Uh, Dr. Brangar says Monster Munch is under is overrated, uh, which is a shame because um, uh, Dr. Brangar, you, you seem like a pretty decent person, but I'm going to have to ban you from the channel now. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, incidentally, though, uh, pickled onion Monster Munch is the best flavour, objectively, but roast beef is my favourite. There it is, I said it. Um, uh... Jazzy Beast of Space Raiders, just saying. Space Raiders are good, but they're not. They're not like top tier. Let's not. John Freeman says all in caps, Flaming Hot Monster Munch! Sorry, I just remembered them and now need some. They are good. Whoa, a chartreuse goose says salt and vinegar discos. Oh, oof. Those are good. Jack Wood says knickknacks, all in caps. Ginger Pickle McPickle says spicy knickknacks. Arcadia says knickknacks. They are very good, but I tell you what I miss are the um, scampi and lemon ones. They don't do them anymore. What gives? Because they were bloody great. Um, salt and vinegar hula hoops, also very good. Salt and vinegar squares. They are the most intense salt and vinegar anything anyone will ever experience, in my humble opinion. Benny42 says, I'm sorry, but I like ready salted. Don't apologise, Benny. That's a tremendous flavour. It's a reason there's a reason it's the, the most popular flavour in the entire country, in the UK. Artima Bale says, as a US view viewer, I'm intrigued by all these snacks. Maybe we should do a snack stream where I just go... Th yes, maybe we should do a snack stream where I just eat lots and lots and lots of crisps and rank them. Hmm... Dumakin says, cheesy moments and scampi fries when I'm in the pub. Scampi fries are great. Cheesy moments are too much for me. I can't I can't deal with them. They're uh, a lot. <gasps> Who MD21 says, not the best, but I had frisps for the first time in ages recently, and they're still great. I remember frisps. Frisps. Where have they gone? Frisps, frisps. Yeah! <laughs> I forgot about those. I'd never heard of them before. Then one of my friends was like, have you tried frisps? And she got me to try them and they were bloody brilliant. Crisps are just nice. Hmm. Maybe it would be a VOD. Ranking crisps. Fuck it, why not? Uh, Emma Benton says, what are frisps? They're just they're just a type of crisp. There's there's they're just good. There's nothing like there's not a gimmick to them. They're not like funyuns, they're just like a crisp, you know? Um just another broke nerd says, yes please. I'd love to know what UK snacks to try. You also went nuts about a soda brand from the UK. Oh, what would that have been? Was it Ting? The delicious grapefruit one? Or was it Iron Brew? I love that. I'm trying to remember what one that was. Corvus Albright has done a super chat saying, I am currently in the process of writing a script for an onstage spoof of a Guy Ritchie-esque heist to get a bag of cheesy Watsits. Huh. It is a small world full of crisps. Nom, 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 nom. It was Iron Brew. Yeah. Okay. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Well, that'll be fun. I'll, go, I'll just go buy a bunch of fucking different crisps and we can rate them. Oh, I'm looking forward to that, because I love crisps. <laughs> oh dear, this, this year's going to be great for my taste buds, disastrous for my heart. Uh, where's it gone? Here we go, there it is. Hey, Mabel Teacher says we still burn Watsits in science lessons. Just thought all would want to know what I've learned from supply in 2021. Um, when I was at school, we burned peas in biology. 
to to work out sort of the killer jewels. And it, you know what? Burning a pea is fucking hard. <laughs> Claire de Bear is on Super Chat saying, for snack stream Worcestershire sauce flavour crisps. Noted. I actually will write that down, because otherwise I will forget. Uh, wool. Worcestershire sauce crisps. Done. Or Worcestershire. <laughs> Mabel teacher says, peas? I know, right? Like, my teacher yelled at us because we ended up putting... Do we end up putting Tipex on it? We put some form of accelerant on it. And the teacher was like, well, it doesn't work now. You've, you've flunked the experiment. It's like, well, it wasn't fucking working before. <laughs> oh, just burn a pea. All right. Rubbish. <sighs> Cheerful Spider says, if you're burning pea, you should see a doctor. <laughs> Very good. I meant the vegetable. In fairness, that biology teacher and I, A, didn't get along, but B, um, she wasn't the most with it person. We used to have um, a biology classroom. It was two banks of desks with a central aisle and aisles down either side. So it's quite a big room. So, you know, you've got like benches, benches on the side where experiment stuff would be, the tables, and then central aisle, sort of aisles down there. And the, uh, when it came to handing in homework, my teacher would walk down the middle and just hold out her hands and people would pass the homework down and give it to her as she went down the aisle. I worked out that if you just walk... If, while she was going down the corridor, if you just went to the other end of the room while she went, so she'd get past the first tables, I'd pass her and then wait until she'd got all the homework in and then when she walked back, I'd just walk back as well. She never noticed I didn't give my homework in, ever. It was incredible. Like... I didn't even, like, duck or anything. I just stood up, and I walked past her, and I walked past her again. Nothing. It was great. Great fun. It finally says, does the UK have all-dressed flavoured crisps? What is... what? No. What is all-dressed flavour? What what is this? Arcadia says, you know what will go well with a crisp stream? Spicy jelly beans. I see you, Arcadia. I see what you are doing. I just don't want to have to chug milk and cough all over myself on this stream. Beard says, shopping for a brush wallet at the minute. Would you recommend yours, Johnny? So this arrived with, like, um, as a gift, actually, a couple of years ago. Uh, it's from Rock Ninja, a set of, just a set of Rock Ninja brushes, which is synthetic ones. Um, and they've held up really well, actually. Um, some of them now have dreadful, dreadful sort of hook tips. But the wallet's good enough. Um... I've not. I've never looked at others, so I can't say how it compares to other brands. But it's a useful thing to have. So I certainly support you in your decision to get one. So I'm just now filling in the leather bits, like the harness and the uh, belt. Jazzy B says, you know what will go over the crisp stream? Hades. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh. I hope you've seen that clip of uh, Pen... Is it Penrose Avalon? Uh, Megara's voice. Um, in a car explaining what cryptocurrency is because it is extremely funny. She is great. Yeah, Jack Wood says, highly recommend Pro Arts mini painting brushes. They're cheaper than the Sisdale Synthetics and hold a tip much better. Oh, good to know. I've been pretty pleased with the Sisdale ones. Um, but I don't have that much experience with other synthetic brushes to compare them to. So it is good to know. 
Gortz Albright says, you know what else would go well with a crisp stream? Jaeger bomb. You d right. What started out as a fun video where we rank crisps for um, just general amusement slash the education of uh, the lovely skelly pals who live outside of the UK. This is increasingly just becoming you asking me to get fucked up on camera <laughs> all at once. Hey, what if you ate too many crisps and then something incredibly spicy and then did a yoga bomb? I, I think I'd go to hospital. Is the answer. Oh, and do it all while playing Hades. Be sick all over my keyboard. Well, controller, I'll be playing Hades with the controller, come on. Ginger Pickle McPickle says a crisp, crisp stream Soulsborn tie in. Every death is another mouthful of crisps. <laughs> That's that sounds like a, sounds like a lot to juggle. I shan't lie. Maybe I should go back to proper journalism. Use the hotas and we covered everything, says Defect. Oh, God. Yeah, we need to get back on that. Still haven't tried to see if anything will... I tried to see if Dishonored 2 will hotas, and no, it won't. But uh, I'm pretty sure Dark Souls will. I just need to find the time to do it, really. So hopefully this lot is starting to come together... It's starting to resemble the finished item. As you can see, kind of unshaded, the yellow is very flat. Whereas, I mean, hmm? Hmm? Shading it really brings out certain um, elements of the model, shall we say. Sega Genesis says all in caps, I'm being good, Johnny, and I, I appreciate it, Sega Genesis. <laughs> Colin Laster says that ass sure isn't flat. <laughs> Thunder Cookie says, I think you should have a jury of crisp lovers, a panel, if you will, to help you judge. Hmm. Hetna Kick says, oh lord, not another butt stream. They're all butt streams, Hetna Kick. That's my secret. It's not even a secret, is it? Ooh, that was my wrist clicking then. <laughs> Batty Wrongleg says, The crisp you eat the crisp you eat depends on the thing that kills you. Why did you not like Seabrooks, Johnny? Tastes like fucking bed of chaos. <laughs> Seabrooks have some interesting ones. Seabrooks are the ones that are just like, here's a here's barbecue meat, right? Oh, Jazzy B says, I used to love roast beef and mustard brannigans. Don't think they exist now, though. But you know what does exist? Hey, D I mean, frazzles. Yeah, um, pour one out for brannigans. Those, those have been discontinued. I wasn't massively into the mustardy ones, but I can't really do mustard. Chilies I can handle. Like, I can handle that spice. But um, horseradish, mustard, wasabi, can't do it. It's, it's incredibly painful. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Uh, Rob W says, how's the palm tattoo holding up? It looks like this. It's got some touching up needs to be done. Uh, you can see there's dropout sort of there. Um, but all in all, it's good. I like it. Um, should be getting my other hand done soonish, I think. Been talking to an artist about it. It should be fun. Benny42 says, had wasabi when I was in Australia, and oh boy, it hurt. It can be really brutal. Although, apparently, um, um, most people have never actually eaten wasabi. It's just coloured horseradish, because the wasabi root itself is actually really, really expensive. Um, so it stands to reason that I can't hack wasabi or horseradish, because apparently they're the same thing, just one of them is green. There you go. Jazzy B says, moving slightly away from crisps, I also have a thing for those cheese pastry twists. 
No, 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 good solid, good solid item. I'm not really much of a pastry person, so I don't feel like a pastry ranking video would would uh, be quite so interesting from me in particular, but you know. If bread tube is like left wing essayists, what's pastry tube? Hmm. Benny42 says, that's right, it's dyed horseradish. Have you been watching QI, Johnny? No. But every, I, this has happened before where I've said something and people are like, yeah, I watch QI too. It's like, oh no. I'm not, I'm not interesting. I'm just culturally obvious. Tony Doak has done a super chat saying on the topic of tattoos, uh, all yours done by the same artist or multiple? Multiple. I have been tattooed by a number of different artists. Um, I wonder how many. I don't know. I don't know how many tattoos I have. One, two, three, four, five. Six on that arm. Six different artists on this arm. That's the same artist. One, two, three. Five different artists on this arm. My chest is... Two, three, my legs, it's th uh, another three. So there's crossover there. But yes, lots. So nine, ten, eleven, probably about twelve different artists so far. Um, I, I just sort of, I like popping around and seeing different people, basically. And, uh, I don't know, it's, it, when I sort of have ideas for tattoos, I also have ideas for the artist I'd like to do it. So there are some people I'll come back to and some people like, that I'll do for like one thing and they'll be like, all right, cool. You know, there you go. <laughs> Flegel hints this pastry tube is rich kids. Then let them then let them do video essays about cake. Oh, that's a bit clumsy. I got away with it. There the harness is for the dwarves. Hmm. Hmm. Centric Lefty is in the chat saying, Hello, Skelly's Happy New Year. Hi, Johnny. Hope all is well and other is all good after COVID. Thank you very much. Um, she's got a bit of a lingering cough and she's still a bit tired, but all in all, uh, we've, we've managed to move past COVID, which is great. Um, thanks, for the, uh, thanks for the comment. Uh, doing very well, thank you. We've had a nice end to last year. This year seems to be going all right so far, but, you know, we're... Under 72 hours in, so hold that thought. We'll see how we do. <laughs> Aoife Brennan says, so you're, you're in a polyancorous relationship with your tattoo artist. Very good. It's quite fun when you go see an artist and they're like, who did that? Or they're like, oh, I know who did that. It's, it's a giggle. Right, that's another one done. Anonymous says, Let Them Eat Cake was A, not said by Marie Antoinette, but some other noble woman, and B, referred to bread baked with white flour rather than actual cake. There you go. I thought someone might pick me up on that. I knew that it, 
that there were problems with the quote, but I didn't know that was um, was what it was. So thank you again, uh, Anonymous. You strike me as a very knowledgeable person. So there, take that. Oh, that's fine. I can clean that up in a bit. Ooh. Oh, it's nice to be painting. And painting dwarves. Probably won't get this entire team done by Wednesday. Unless I dick around with them tomorrow, but... I'd quite like to get some work done, to be honest. Hit the ground running. Oops. Flood that bit with water. Saved it, rather. Tanya Arenas says, This is Cake Tube. Cake Tube is actually all butts. Good to know. If he's done a super chat, it is of the pair I mentioned earlier. There are no buildings in this uh, super sticker, uh, so I can't tell if the pair has returned to a normal size or if it's still massive. But uh, anyway, the pair seems to be in a more harmonious mood. It's kind of grabbing its hands, and then it blows a big kiss, and uh, sort of hearts emerge. One in particular is quite large and lingers, and then they go, and they blow it away, uh, which is very nice. Thank you, Ify. Um And thank you, the anthropomorphized pair, for no longer destroying a city, but instead blowing kisses about the place. You seem like a complicated individual, sports pair, but gosh... We end up talking about you a lot, so you must be doing something right. That was clumsy, that bit. What I'll do... Okay, here we go. Penny42 says, I never really liked brioche. Uh, I like I like a chocolate chip brioche, but to be honest with you, I, ha I did have one a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh yeah, burger buns. I really feel like brioche has been overdone on the burger front. Like, a normal bun's fine. It won't fall apart into a wet mess. Please, can we just... Something a bit more bready would be lovely, actually. It's been long enough. It's like, you know, we're also into year... What feels like year seven of everything tastes like salted caramel. It's not that good. It's not that good. Sure, it's interesting, like, ooh, salty, ooh, caramel, like, yeah, but fucking hell, can we change the tune, you know, anyway. Um, Aoife Brennan has done a super sticker of uh, of the pear, looking very bashful, actually, kind of like going, ooh, ooh, ooh and wiggling its sort of pear body and blushing, um, which I didn't know pears could do. That actually insinuates it has a vascular system, which is terrifying. But anyway, it then does like a coquettish giggle. It's like, hee hee, and sweats a little bit. Also quite a disturbing realisation. It's got sweat glands. Um, but generally speaking, the, the the pair is kind of like, ooh, and sort of does a little wiggle, does a little giggle, and blushes. So there we go. Um, Hennet Kick has done a super chat saying, what is the origin of you describing the super stickers? I always love hearing your descriptions of them. Hennet Kick, firstly, that is a very generous um, super chat. Thank you very much. And secondly, um, I'm damned if I know. <laughs> um, I think, uh, to be honest with you, I think what it is, it's just, it's, it's a desire to make sure that uh, the person actually feels like they got value out of the super sticker. Because obviously when people do a super chat like like this one, I'll end up talking about, you know, the thing they've said for a little bit, you know, maybe maybe under a minute and maybe a few minutes, you know, it may spark a whole big conversation. Um, the super stickers, basically, like, I could be like, oh, and I could I could have been like, oh, and, you know, if a Brennan's done a, a super sticker of a, of a pair giggling, thanks so much. Um, and that feels weird. It feels almost like, you know, it's just like, oh, I was going to move past that. And, um... I'll be honest with you, I've just, I, I started doing it, and then I was like, well, it'll be funny if I... Well, not funny, it'll be rewarding if I describe them every time as if I'd never seen them before. And then... Um, 
I just find it a fun linguistic challenge to try and describe them differently every time. It just it makes me giggle. So I guess in answer to your question, uh, Hennekick, I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, God, if that isn't the ethos that landed us all in this this sordid mess of a channel, then I don't know what is. Anyway, dwarves. Melanie Suits has never had a sloppy joe with more sauce than meat. What is a sloppy joe? Like, is it... I don't think I know what one is. I've certainly never had one. Um, is it like... Benny42 says, a mess. It's not like spaghetti bolognese in a sandwich, is it? Okay, Batty Wrongleg says, think a chilli burger, remove the burger. It's like bolognese on a bread roll. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Um, loose meat sandwich and a ketchup barbecue sauce. Okay, all right. Taco meat on a sandwich, but the flavour profile is more barbecue. I can understand that. Ginger, Ginger Pickle McPickle is going straight for the jugular, saying a sloppy joe is bad bologna on a butty. <laughs> right, um, Aiden Folks, meanwhile, has done a super chat. Um, you remember the pear? from earlier, and you remember that I mentioned it was looking a bit stoned. Well, um, unfortunately, I think the pear has been back into the edibles, because the pear is kind of standing there, quite bent-kneed, actually, so it's kind of like hunched down, and it's got one arm up like this, and it's kind of just waving back and forth, and because they're a bit out of it, the other arm is just sort of swaying. So all in all, they look like a haunted animatronic at a fairground. They're just like, uh, uh. um, And their eyes are slightly like, like squeezed together, almost as if they're really bloodshot. And there's some text that says, cool. Um, the the pair is still wearing the sports headband, but I think it's safe to say that if you put... Um, I, I wouldn't put this pair in my starting 11 right now, nor would I ask them to pee in a cup, because I don't think... We'd then have to deal with the consequences of them testing positive. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the Super Sticker Aiden folks. Um... That pair is stoned as shit. Nathan has done a super chat saying, Hey Johnny, can you remind the people going to Ham Meat that the tickets for the Warhammer World event go on sale at 7pm, please? Yes, I can. I'll actually also set a reminder so it, uh, I get a little alarm a minute before. Uh, so, 7... Sorry. Yeah, because if you are going to Ham Meat... <laughs> which is Warhammer, or ham, to meet, meeting, ham meet. The tickets to the Warhammer World event go on sale at 7pm. Thank you, Nathan, for the reminder. I will remind you in turn. Monster Needle is done a super chat saying, I've shown Teddy the pup all the Lord of the Rings films. Does anyone have ideas for other things I should watch with him? And the Grond scene made me think of you. Yes, fucking love Grond. Thinking of getting a Grond tattoo, actually. Um, which would be very exciting. Um, I actually ended up watching The Thing last night, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing from 1981, and it was pure coincidence. She doesn't care about, she doesn't watch films, she doesn't really pay attention to what's going on on the screen. She's never really done that dog thing of confusing reality with anything else, or recognised a dog and gone like, oh my god, that's another dog. But just after the kennel scene, Watson ended up like on the sofa with her face under a cushion and one leg over the cushion, one back leg over it. And it looked like she'd properly buried herself under a pillow. Um, she hadn't. She was just being a doofus. But um, it was quite funny. Um, but don't show Teddy the pup uh, the thing. I wouldn't. Or the thing from another world, which is the 50s um, version that was remade by Carpenter. It's very different, but there is... It's not, also not great for dogs. Uh, Talman has done a super chat saying, Johnny, thank you for streaming Fallen Order. I had passed on it because I love Soulsborne games, but I can't get good enough to play them. Uh, Fallen Order, though, is right in the sweet spot. Love it. Yeah, it's good. Um, I like it a lot, actually. I, um, I didn't think I'd enjoy it anywhere near as much as I have. I'm having a really good time playing it, and I'm very glad that that was what was voted for. Um... And I feel like it, it'll be nice for when I eventually try and tackle Demon Souls, either on the stream or in a series. Um, I think that'll be good fun. Um, 
Mr. Harry Gray is on Super Chat saying, Happy New Year, Johnny. Here's to another year of awesome videos and streams. Keep being awesome. That's such a lovely Super Chat. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be back at it, to be honest with you. Like, I had a lovely, lovely break. And if I'm honest, I did that. I did that classic, like, just one more day. I'm not ready to go back to the school thing. I stayed up really late last night with a pal. Um... Uh, but it is nice to be back in the swing of things. I'm looking forward to doing all sorts of things this year, including apparently eating a lot of crisps on camera and ranking them. Maybe I should rope in a friend for that. I'll see if anyone's... I'll ask some people and see if they're available. Because um, it'd be nice to have someone to bounce off. God, is my first collab really just going to be eating crisps? Probably. It'd be very on brand. <clears throat> Ginger Pickle McPickle says, what's the grand? Is it a cheese? Is it the grand fromage? Grand is a battering ram. Uh, it's a battering ram so great and terrible that uh, the forces of Sauron named it. Uh, it has a big wolf head. It is uh, very on fire. And uh, they use it to batter down the walls of Minas Tirith in uh, The Return of the King. It is badass. Uh, and in the film, as they're dragging it to the door, everyone's chanting, grond, grond, grond. Which is just a fun thing to chant at any time, really. There are probably times when you'd be asked to stop, like at a christening, for example. But um, generally speaking, grond's great value. Lo bloody love a bit, bit of grond. There we go. Got away with that bit. It's more strappage. What is that? What is that? I was going to paint it brown. I don't know what it is. I'm going to paint it brown. Ah, fuck. I haven't painted any of their shoes. Oh, well. Baddy Wrongleg says, What if the baby's called Grand? Fair. I'm not having kids. I don't want kids. Having a kid called Grand would be pretty great. Or a dog. A dog called Grand. Although we already know what we're calling the next dog. We're calling it Ripley. After Ellen Ripley. I think Grand would be quite a hard sell, to be honest. It would also have to be a massive dog. And I'm quite keen on staffies, so. Eberl506 says, OK, all, got to go, got to clean the bathroom. Blah! Have fun cleaning the bathroom. I gen genuinely mean that. I hope it's a rewarding experience, and uh, I hope it passes quickly. The cleaning, I mean, oh, God. Let's try that again. Sorry you have to clean the, sorry you have to clean the bathroom. I hope it goes well. Clean, clean it well. I was about to say, I think I got away with that one. No, I didn't. Timothy Thomas has done a super chat saying, Hi, Johnny. Nothing to do with painting minis, but wonder what you and the rest of the LSPs are having for dinner. Me and my fiancé are having katsu curry. Ooh, delicious. Um, I am having um, fish pie, actually. It's got some leftover fish pie. Um, my wife is going out to a friend's house um, for dinner with them, I think. Hold on. Maybe. Um, but yes, I'll be eating leftover fish pie. That's the plan, anyway. Claire de Bear's having MS party food. Hello, living la vida loca. Oh, Abby Marie might just make some poutine. Fuck, what a way to live. Cheese curds, hard to get here. Poutine, difficult to make in the UK. Just hard to find this stuff. Chloe three seven three has done a super chat saying, "Hey Johnny, hope you have a love. Uh, hope you have a lovely Christmas and a great New Year. Great to see you back." 
It's my birthday on Wednesday. Could I get an early birthday shout out? Absolutely, Chloe 373. Um, a very happy birthday to you. I hope you have a bloody lovely time. Um, and I hope you find some lovely people to spend it with. Obviously, I realise that might be difficult, uh, given the current state of everything. But um, with any luck, you will have an absolutely delightful day. Um, I wonder, like, because my, my birthday is in the summer. Um, so when I was a kid, it was always the summer holidays. No one was around to celebrate it. And I do wonder if, like, is it a similar thing, having your birthday? You don't have to super chat anything back, by the way. Just reply and I'll read it. Um, is it difficult having your birthday in January? Like, are people generally a bit partied out? Or are things quieter? Is it easy to have friends around you on your birthday, is what I'm asking? Because summer kids... Oh, these are some lonesome birthdays. Which is, actually suits me fine. I don't really tell people when my birthday is. I don't, I don't celebrate it. So, it's fine. Oh, Talman's having a homemade lasagna tonight. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. I haven't made lasagna in too long. I should do that. <laughs> There's just a small noise of agreement from my wife there. <laughs> KFP Schnitzel, Schnitzel Koch Shango says, Fish cake, you should let me know how it was. That's pretty good. <sighs> Dr. Brangos says, are you going to put beef jerky on it again? No. <laughs> it wasn't good. And people told me off for that. They were like, this is a fucking shit episode. Low energy, low effort. And that's not how you make lasagna. So, But in fairness, I was going to get frog's legs uh, from a shop that I knew had them, and then they didn't have them. And then I was panicking, and I was like, I've got to make an episode. So... That's why I made Monster Lasagna all those years ago. Feels like a whole lifetime ago, that, actually. Angel Beat says, Frog's legs, they sound riveting. Happy New Year and also fuck you, Angel Beat. <laughs> uh, it's genuinely nice to see you in chat. I'm sorry I told you to fuck off. Uh, Chloe373 says, yes, everyone is either broke and can't be bothered, but I'm going to the Van Gogh exhibit with my flatmate, so all's good. Well, that sounds like a lovely day out. I hope you have a great time. Um, uh, do send Vincent my best. Um, yeah, I'm, well, I'm sorry to hear that January birthdays can be a little bit low-key, thanks to other people being rubbish, but yeah. Skills Loading has done a super chat saying, Cooking a roast as I watch, and these are the crispiest roast potatoes I've ever cooked. I attribute the success to this stream. Apparently talking about butts, tattoos, and crisps is key to my cooking. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations on the roast potatoes. I've got to say, nailing it with roasts is so satisfying. I've finally got my recipe down, or the method down, rather. It's, I wouldn't call it my recipe. It's something I looked up and then did a few times, but... I consistently now make good roast potatoes that are all kind of on the small side. You know when you get, like, roast potatoes, and some of them are vast, and some of them you're like, oh, that's a small one, that's going to be crispy. I make all of them that size, because why not? Why not Why not live life to the full? Um, so, yeah, big big fan of making roast potatoes now that I know I can do them. Um, I'm now trying to perfect Hasselback potatoes. I love cut the cutting of the, the potatoes, and they come out well, but they're not amazing yet. I think I need to, like, experiment with putting garlic butter in them or, like, forcing things into the little cuts. Um, anyway, Hasselback potatoes, great. Roast potatoes, great. Here's how I make roast potatoes, in case anyone was wondering. Um, Aiden Folks has, has uh, preempted me a little bit, saying, parboil? Yes, so, um, I peel the potatoes and cut them and put them into a pan of cold water. Cold water. Uh, I salt that cold water and then I uh, bring that water to the boil. I then parboil the potatoes for three minutes. Three minutes only. Um, uh, maybe sometimes four, but generally speaking, it's three minutes. Then strain them into a colander and... Uh, 
Basically, you grab hold of the colander and you shake it like like a like those potatoes owe you money. You're just like, da, 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 da. and it roughs up the um, it roughs up the edges of them, um, which helps make them crispy. Then uh, it's optional if you are um, uh, gluten intolerant, uh, but I sprinkle some plain flour on there, like to coat and then toss them again so they're kind of like roughed up on the edges and also lightly coated in flour. At this point, um, we turn to the oven. Putting the oven on, um, once it's up to speed, I put in a baking tray with oil already in it, in there, um, to heat up. Um, so it gets nice and nice and hot. And then take it out, dump the potatoes in, you'll hear them sizzling. When we had a gas hob, I used to actually put the gas on and kind of... Um, like turn them over to get them nice and evenly coated and you get like a good you get a good head start on them crisping up and then I put them in the oven at like 180 degrees on, in a fan oven centigrade obviously um, and then turn them every sort of 12 to 15 minutes um, until they're just like perfect um, Thunder Cookie says sounds like you need a metal colander for that I actually use a um, I use a, a plastic one and it works just fine Potatoes, they just can't, they can't, when you're just like shaking them like that, they, they can't handle it, mate. Don't worry about it. Uh, Sven Hanneman says beef dripping in polenta. Um, I've I tried some uh, roasted sort of polenta. They were more like chips uh, recently, and they were bloody delicious, actually. I'd never used polenta before. My wife just casually threw some in while I'm making chips, and it was great. So, yeah. yeah. Mm, right, so that's how I make potatoes. Um, but anyway, long story short, thanks for the super chat skills loading. Uh, glad your potatoes come out well. Thanks for attributing it to this stream. You're welcome. All right, we're getting there with these. Oh my god. Chaos says there's a chippy near me that sells battered chips. And I'm worried that if I try them I'll have a new addiction. That's a bit much that's a bit much for me. I would try one, but A I think that would be too much. And B, holy shit. <laughs> I would also be terrified that I'd get addicted. <laughs> wow. Battered chips. Fly not too close to the sun, Icarus. That's that's That is a that's a cautionary tale in the in the offing, isn't it? I tell you what, it's been God, oh no, how long has it been? Must have been Oh god, twelve years since I last had battered haggis, and that stuff is amazing. Just so good. I mean haggis in general is brilliant, but battered haggis, woof. Dangerous but delicious. Emma Benton says, I'm so hungry, dear lord. Sorry, Emma. Probably doesn't help that it's the morning for you, and we're all talking about, like, proper, like, evening fare. <laughs> A red meat off the bone, etc., etc. Incidentally, this is just a... Sorry, it just popped into my head, but my brain went from we're talking about hearty fare to um, red meat off the bone to renaissance fairs in the States. I know that turkey legs are a big thing, where people, there are even t-shirts being like, I'm just here for the turkey legs, where people walk around being like, I am a medieval person, look at me eat this turkey leg. Um, I'm aware of that culturally as a thing. Did you know they sell turkey legs at E3? Like, okay, so, um, the LACC, where E3 is typically held, has, um, like, different halls, and there are concourses to get through them, and in order to get from one hall to another, you can sometimes go outside. And there's a, a long outside bit where they have, sometimes they'll have like a rock band stage or whatever. But they also have a lot of food trucks. So they have like, you know, you can go get tacos or you can go get, you know, burgers or sandwiches or whatever. If you don't have time to leave the convention center and go get food elsewhere. Um, incidentally, there is actually quite a good taco stand inside the LACC near the South Hall. Uh, which you can see in Starship Troopers. You can well, you can't see the taco stand. You can see roughly where it normally is. But anyway, there's always a food truck 
that sells turkey legs at E3. So sometimes you'll see people just walking through the halls of E3, just like, ang, 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 just walking about with a fucking turkey leg in their hands. And it is, it is so funny. Like, no disrespect to anyone who enjoys a turkey leg. No disrespect to the people who, who, who buy them. It's just the fact that they're eating a turkey leg and they're at E3. Those two things, absolutely fine. But together, for some reason, it's probably the jet lag. It, it cooks my brain and is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. It's hilarious. As <laughs> just they're just sort of, they're just wandering around, just like not really paying attention to it. They're just like Wank. it's just so funny. Uh, it's great. E three is a fever dream at the best of times. When you've come come over from the UK, like you've landed the next day, you've got up at uh, you know you've woken up at three in the morning because of jet lag. You're trying to cover all the conferences at once. And then someone just rolls past eating a fucking turkey leg. It's it kills me. Absolutely kills me. <sighs> yeah. My God. I mean I've not done my last E3 was 2019, but that was kind of everyone's last E3, so. Um, in terms of the show floor. But uh yeah. Oh. If you're out there, turkey leg eaters of E3. God love you. So funny. Anyway, sorry, I'll stop. I'll stop obsessing about it now. Or will I? I'll just stop talking about it. Right, you've already been painted, so I don't need to do you. Okay, uh, what do we need to do? We need to do hair. We need to do metal. Great. Hannah has uh, has entered the chat. Say hey, everyone. I finally properly came out as trans on Sunday and went to the mall dressed properly femme for the first time ever yesterday. Hannah, congratulations, that's amazing. Like, um, I can't imagine how liberating that must have been for you. Um, I hope that um, those close to you had nothing but good things to say. I hope those far away from you had nothing but good things to say. I hope everyone um, reacted appropriately to you coming out as, uh, as trans, which is to say being fucking happy for you. Um, and yeah, congrats on just like walking the mall as your truest self. That's fucking brilliant. Ginger Pickle McPickle says Johnny's first sponsor is going to be Bernard Matthews. Not on my fucking watch. <laughs> Dr. Brangar says, right, Blaze in the Dark Time, I'm off to be a dishonoured beefcake guard shaped criminal. Have fun! Don't forget you can trade position for effect. It actually really annoys the GM, in my experience. Because I was that GM. Or referee, or how are they how are they called? Um I think I'm going to do all of these doors with grey beards. I just think I am. I think it works nicely with the rest of the colour palette. And no one's here to stop me. Mm -mm -mm. Hannah has put lots of smiling emojis in the chat. As well she should. Ginger Pickle McPickle says, what if they offered a cool million? I just... I think I'd turn it down? I'd... I'd want to say I'd turn it down? Because that's more money than I'd know what to do with. And it would be... I could give it to charity. I just don't... I don't think Turkey's very good. I think I'd be ter a terrible person to sponsor. Ooh, Christopher Needham says, what if they offered a warm million? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, but turkey dinosaurs. Mmm, this is difficult. Because, right, the easiest thing for me to say, right, would be to be like... Statements like, I wouldn't want to rep that brand. True. Like... I think it would be a weird thing to be sponsored by. True. Um, like, money's not that important to me. Also true. But that is a... Would I, would I do it if I had that much money? Because I could give a lot of that money to charity. Probably all of that money to charity. Pay off the mortgage. <sighs> I 
I don't know what I would do. If Bernard Matthews actually came out of the woodwork and was like, here is a cheque for a million pounds if you do a sponsored stream about Turkey. I'd like I'd like to sit here and say, in all honesty, like, no, I'd turn it down. And I would like that to be true, but the simple truth is I don't know. I don't know what I'd do if somebody offered me a million pounds to talk about Turkey on the stream, especially since I've been talking about Turkey for about ten minutes now. So I don't know. I'd do it, but I'd give a lot of it to charity, I think. Like, more than half. I don't know. Fucking turkeys. Fuck off, Bernard Matthews. Don't bring me your, your weird, paltry money. Your tainted blood bucks. Imperial City Guard has done a super chat. Uh, the super chat has no message attached. I assume I'm being asked to pay for my crimes. Uh, Imperial City Guards... Uh, Imperial City Guard... Uh, number one, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate the support. Secondly, if there was meant to be a message attached to that, don't do another super chat. Just type... Um, normally in the chat, and I will read it out uh, with all of the fanfare uh, that I would have afforded it if uh, it were attached to the Super Chat in the first place. Um, uh, because, let's face it, I could really do with something to get me off talking about turkey money. I'd take a million to talk about Cheetos. That'd be fine. C. Clark says, on the subject of turkey legs, I'm finishing my doublet for this year's Renaissance Festival. Is anyone else working on anything? Hmm, doublet. Uh, I'm working on some dwarves. Um, hopefully, if I've done my job right, that's been fairly evident for a while. Uh, as per usual, my projects are mainly just painting for Blood Bowl. Amy Owen has done a super chat saying, what if they offered you a million turkey legs? Would you take the brand deal then? Also, Happy New Year. Hope it's a good one. I am... Um, I don't know. I, no, I can't think of anything I want less than a million turkey legs. What would I do with them? No. Jack Wood says, my memory of Cheetos is inextricably linked to playing Galaxy Trucker with friends at uni. I played some Galaxy Trucker on the weekend. Uh, it was great. I sucked at it. Uh, was it on the weekend or was it last week? Well, it was last year, actually. Uh, it was on the 30th. Played Galaxy Trucker and Cosmic Frog, which is a pretty great double bail, actually. Um, here's how this chap's looking now. Grey hair. A bit more dynamic. Um, Arcadia says a million turkey legs feeds a lot of the food bank. Yes, true. But, um, yeah. Hmm. Claire de Bear says, Johnny, my mum, bracket Sue, would like to know if you ordered The King is Dead. I did, Claire de Bear, and also Sue. Uh, I have ordered... Um, oh, that's my phone. Uh, people going to hand me. Uh, tickets go on sale in one minute. Do what you need to do. Um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yes, uh, The King is Dead. I did order it. It is on... Uh, basically on back order because I ordered it... Uh, when the shop had already closed for the Christmas break. Um, so it should be arriving in a few days, but I'm very excited because it's a great game and uh, now I, I own it and can propel France to a series of glorious victories from the comfort of my own home, which is nice. Uh, thank you again. <laughs> Jack Wood says, the ham call, all in caps. The ham call's coming from, no, the call's coming from inside the ham. God damn it, it was right there. Uh, Nathan, Nathan says, says, thanks, Johnny. You are very welcome. Uh, I probably won't make it to ham meat, but um, I hope everyone has a fucking amazing time. It would, it would be lovely to do some sort of uh, meet-up hobby or otherwise this year. Hopefully, COVID will permit it. Um, I'm hoping nothing is... I've, I've not really talked to them yet, but um, uh, I mean... Uh, presumably I'll be making uh, Alex Venture appearances this year, but I'd also quite like to check out WASD, uh, which is the show that's taking over uh, Tobacco Dock. But uh, we shall see about that, because it's early days in the year. Monster Noodles and another Super Chat saying, Interested to hear what everyone's proud of achieving in 2021. I celebrated four years clean, started uni and got a dog. Brackets those last two in the same week. Wow, that's a big week. And congratulations on uh, the four years. That's fucking phenomenal. 
Um, I'm sure that must have taken a lot, but it sounds like you're absolutely smashing it. Um, gosh, 2021. Um, it was quite a big one for me. Um, bought a flat, left my job, started, started a business. <laughs> um, got a lot of tattoos. Uh, so yeah, it was a good It was a good year. It was a tough year, um, just because everything and just a bunch of stuff. But uh, yeah, those are the things I'm proud of in 2021. Oh, and I painted eight Blood Bowl teams. Eight of the fuckers. And I made some new friends. Uh, through Blood Bowl, actually. Which is very good. What about you lot? What were you proud of? If he says I survived 2021. God damn right. Zega Genesis says I finished my first novel. Congratulations. Um, Yasmin Warren says I... Uh, all I did in 2021 was survive it, but that's good enough for me. That is plenty. I mean... What's the quote? Is it comparison is the thief of joy? I think it's very difficult towards the end of the year. I noticed it on Twitter where lots of people are deservedly sharing their successes. But um, my God, last year was hard. And surviving is a massive achievement in and of itself. And uh, I'll be honest, you lot, the lovely skeleton pals, made it a lot easier to do. Uh, you kept me very, very busy. And... Uh, God, we talked about butts a lot, didn't we? Bin Wizard says, I got a comic published and I continued to happen. God damn right. Timothy Thomas says, getting engaged to my love, Laura. Honk, honk, honk. Hermit Prime says, I taught my younger sister to be a GM. Lovely. Benny42 says, I survived another year of being taught during a pandemic and still haven't gotten a single detention. Hot damn. Nice work, Benny. I c cannot say the same. I was in detention a lot as, as a child at school. Um, although there were two types of detention at my school. Well, there were several types, but there was like proper detention, like Friday detention, which was like you miss, you miss your Friday lunch break, uh, which was always difficult because like lunch was like fish and chips. And it meant that you got to eat whatever was left. It was generally crap. Um, but on Wednesdays, there was chemistry detention, where you just had to sit, had to go sit for half an hour in a chemistry classroom and copy out something from a textbook. Um, and I hated doing my chemistry homework so much that I was like, well, I don't really do anything on Wednesdays. Sod it. Um, so I just didn't do my homework and just, just took the detention every week instead. Um, to the point where one time the head of chemistry was like, you're in detention every week. I was like, I know. He was like, maybe you should straighten up and fly right. I was like, no, no, no I'm okay. Uh, in fairness, I learned a shitload about the blast furnace because that was the thing I copied out every single week. I didn't copy out different things. I only copied out the section about the blast furnace. I don't know why. But um, when it came to learning about the blast furnace, I was, I was on it, mate. It's great. But anyway, Benny, what I'm saying, I'm not a role model in this instance. It's good that you've never had a detention. Did that come too late? Came a little bit late, didn't it? Anyway. Benny Falls 2 says, I'm currently in year 10 for context. That's still good going, mate. There we go. Uh, sort of bit of the old massive beard jumping in the air troll slayer <sighs> anonymous says so you had a blast yes <sighs> apotheon2000 says got tickets for ham meat booked yes bing 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 Oh, Mabel Teacher says my music TC used to make you write lines and then rip them up in front of you. Old school, harsh. Yeah, come on, that's a bit much. Jazzy B says, what I did a lot of in 2021? Play Hades. <laughs> yes, you did, Jazzy. 
Bally wrong legs asks a good question. Are the organisers of ham meat aware they're organising ham meat? Probably not. Emma Benton says, I never had detention. Ah, good for you. I, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Me. I didn't have regular detention that much. I had Saturday detention once. That was shit. Kelly Lutz has done Super Chat saying, Cheers to a new year, Johnny. I'm getting my first tattoo ever on the 9th, and I'm super excited. Keep being lovely skellies. Um, thank you very much for the Super Chat, Kelly, and good luck on the tattoo. I hope you have a lovely time. Just remember, uh, eat beforehand, um, and keep a sugary drink with you to keep your blood sugar level up. Uh, getting tattooed... There are some areas that, that hurt more than others, but getting tattooed generally isn't... It's it's intimidating, but it's not actually as bad as you might think. But the most important thing is to make sure that you've you've got uh, some food on board, because getting tattooed absolutely rips through calories. It's the weirdest thing. I've got out of holiday sessions before and eaten an entire meal and been like, ha ha, that didn't touch the sides. My my body's just using that. So to be honest with you, one of my favourite things about um, getting tattooed is that I have lunch twice. <laughs> it's good. C. Clark says, did you learn important life lessons at that Saturday detention? Oh, God, no. I wish. But there wasn't, like, another... There weren't other kids... There weren't enough kids to represent all of the archetypes of teenagers in uh, in that detention, so we couldn't... We couldn't vibe off one another. Also, and I feel like... I feel like the nice witch would back me up if she was still in chat uh, at this point, but... um. Uh, the remake they did on uh, remake the makeover they did on on the basket case in uh, the Breakfast Club was a uh, travesty. She was she was more authentically herself and she was far more attractive before. So keep keep your hands off off her, um, Claire, the princess one. Molly Molly Ringwald, you stay away from her. She's great. Sure, she eats a cereal sandwich for lunch, but that's fine. Mabel Teacher says, all in caps, she was perfect as she was. She fucking was, you know. Oh, she was great. And it's just, oh, it's just the way Molly Ringwald just looks at her and it's like, hmm, like sizing up like a project. And she's quite rightly like, what? What do you want? What are you doing? Yep. Oh. Ali Sheedy. Yeah. Ali Sheedy has a tiny, like a tiny bit part in Home Alone 2 as uh, a not very helpful person at the ticket office. Um, uh, at the airport. She's not very helpful, but she is, she, uh, she is Ali Sheedy. So that's nice. I'm heartened by how many people in, in chat have never had detention. Like, genuinely, good for you lot. I was a precocious little shit at school. Um, probably won't be that surprising to any of you, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, the teachers often had things to say about me, so it's fine. A lot of it was entirely fair. Aiden Folk says she was in Short Circuit, wasn't she? I um I haven't seen Short Circuit in a long time. Since I was a child, basically. But one of my friends said he watched it recently. And, uh, ooh, apparently there's some stuff in that that does not hold up well in this, this day and age. Uh, so I don't know if I'll be watching it anytime soon. Much as I love Ali Sheedy. Painting beards on dwarves. Painting beards on dwarves. Painting 
painting beds on doors. <laughs> Buddy Wronglick says, Johnny has experience painting beds on. We learned from Die Hard. Yep. I was a friend who did that, actually, I think. Yeah, it was back in the days when I couldn't grow a beard. Who knew? Oh. That's right. William Barry says, can't be worse than Fisher Stevens doing brown face in Short Circuit 2. I think that's what I was thinking of. Not great. Oh. Oh, Captain Crimbo is in chat and says, Whoa, it's my first live stream of the year. And it's the first live stream of the year. Happy New Year, Skellies. Hello, Captain Crimbo. I hope you are well. Um, we've been going for three and a quarter hours. And you know what? Unsurprisingly, the chat's gone places. Mostly round the back. We've talked a lot about butts. And uh, a lot about centaurs. We've talked about detention. Uh... Oh, Emma Benton says, ha, I win, we're getting bento boxes. Yes, Emma. Oh, we talked quite a lot about crisps and what we're having for dinner. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I brought that on myself. I got a WhatsApp from my wife saying, can we get bento boxes? <laughs> oh. Dear, oh dear. That's very funny. <laughs> well, now I might have fish pie. I'll have it tomorrow. That was very funny. Emma Benton, dinner influencer. Oh, I might get a wafu tofu bento. That's really good. Hmm. Ray the Shadow Hearts on another super chat saying, I would get detention for having long hair as a guy. Uh, I had to tie it back, which hurts my head. So I didn't and just got demerits. Girls had no such rule. Yeah, it's it's rubbish, isn't it, how um uh how those rules are applied, which is to say inconsistently. I was in trouble a lot for having long hair at, at school. Uh you got suspended if your hair was too long. Uh as a boy, I know somebody assigned male at birth, obviously. I fell into that category, um, which led to some disastrous haircuts. It really did, which didn't help, but you know. In my final year, I started growing out, and there wasn't a thing they could do to stop me. I was like, what are you going to do? Not let me take my hair levels. So that was fine. Like I say, precocious little shit when I was in school. Right. Okay. Oh, fuck. Ugh. I need to paint over that. Got some grey on the terracotta bit. We just got metal to do, and then we can shade these little little sods, which is nice because actually uh, there's not a lot to do on this particular colour scheme once we've shaded them. Uh, it comes out looking quite nice. I do kind of lighten up the um, the red a little bit, but that's really sort of it. But um, just going on check. So, 
We're talking about which place to get bento boxes from. <laughs> okay, let's do some metal P painting. Some, some painting of the metal things. I missed the super chat. Oh, it is. Uh, Titan Uranus is on a super chat saying, Sorry if you said earlier, but have you seen Centaur World, Johnny? No. American animated musical comedy streaming television series created by Megan Nicole Dong with songs by Dong and Dominic Bisan Bis Bisignan Bisignano Bisignano Wow that certainly is a centaur world I Wow this looks like nightmare fuel There's a human body with a giraffe neck Huh Apparently I need to watch it. I lay the centaur of attention. Oh, Angel Beat, you're killing me. Voltoffel says, we have a place called Bento Box in the city. For whatever reason, they don't have Bento Boxes on the menu. I'd be fucking livid. Hmm. Out. I was a bit worried when I woke up this morning, my index finger hurt. I managed to somehow strain a tendon in my hand doing the washing up yesterday. And I was like, oh god, does my hand hurt too much to paint? But luckily, it was okay. But yeah, that was weird. Really enjoying just having bits of my body just sort of get worse at doing their jobs. Like, I've got a bad knee now. I'm going to start swimming again to try and strengthen it up. But it's like, oh, is that just a thing I have? Seems that way. So. Um, that'll be a thing. It's no longer going to be an act when I talk about Casimir's bad knee in Blades of the Dark. <laughs> So now we're just putting on some, uh, ooh, there's my eye, putting on some hammered copper, um, which is a nice shade that I like. The science boy says, ah, so you're at that magical age now where you can injure yourself severely doing normal everyday stuff. Seems that way, and it feels like it's come on quite quickly. Um, but hey ho, it's fine. I always knew that knee was going to be a bit, I injured it a fair few times when I was studying martial arts. So, meh. Mabel teacher says, if you ever need knee advice, I'm the queen of bad knees. Thank you, Mabel. Uh, I think it's all right. Basically, I think, actually, if I just go back to swimming, then it'll be absolutely fine, and I can push back whatever's going on um, for the foreseeable. And then I may end up sort of getting a support or a walking aid, but we'll see. I think that's a that's a, a fair ways down the line, so I'm not not mega worried. It's just weird. It'd be nice to go back to swimming, although I've got tattoo appointments this month and next month. Uh, so it'll be a while until I can swim. Actually, that's a good point. Let's see. I just want to make sure I haven't double booked myself. I have not. When is that appointment then? Sorry, this is going to bug me. Mm -mm. What have I done? Aha. That's fine then. Never mind. Everything's good. 
Edward Chester says, please see a doctor if you can before using supports, etc. They can do more harm than good if not used properly. Good to know. Um, my father is a doctor, so I will have a chat with him. Um, but yes, thank you for that. I don't want to do myself more harm than good. David's story says, more slapping on stream. Oh yeah, it's coming. Um, is there any gold to do on this one? Not really. I want to do that little fin. Why not? Oh, fuck. Oh, I was doing trim on the shoulder pads, wasn't I? Bugger. That's going to be annoying. Fine. That's the problem with doing a test model, is you often do stuff that you can't be bothered to do when it becomes a batch paint job. But it does look good. Shit. That went badly. Oh well. Just Man Bun is fine, says, is it the same knee as Casimir's? Oh yeah, my left knee. It's just having fun. Just It's just it's got a lot to say at the minute, that's all. I jarred it a few weeks ago, so. Okie dokie, right, shoulder pad trim. It's getting to that magic period in the stream where I'm, I'm just muttering to myself. So I hope everyone enjoys that. I should move to a smaller brush. That's what I should be doing. Whoa, talking of, talking of uh, giving it some. Hope you, <laughs> you probably heard Luna then. Um, I don't know what Luna's problem is right now, but she's certainly being vocal about it. Wait, was that the brush already? Yes, never mind. I was using the right brush. Jack Wood says, all in caps, CAT! I don't think Luna's going to come see me, but she might. It's been a pet light stream. I have to say. Alright. Yeah, it's worth doing the trim, isn't it? Oh. Jazzy B says we haven't made a chimera for Luna yet. Turkey legs? Octo Luna, please, no. Leave the poor cat alone, she's old. Poor old scream cat. Bit more hammered copper there. Sorry, I keep pulling this out of focus, don't I? There's a little beard detail. <laughs> Tiny Renner says, old for an octopus in particular. <sighs> Poor Luna. She's completely oblivious to all of this chat as well. She only pays attention to pretty much one thing in life, and it's, is anyone petting me? Little Dwarf? Yeah, these are coming out quite nicely. Good. 
And once these are done, that's that's all of the dwarves, and the ogres are going to be quite quick. So this team is nearly done, which is nice. Maybe I can paint these up tomorrow. Finish up the team. I mean, be nice before I play a friendly on Wednesday. Joshua Wood says, "You have a cat. I have two cats. Um, they're kind of my wife's cats, really. They're our cats." They they were my wife's cats before we um, got together and moved in and got married. Um, one is called Luna. She is ten. She screams very loudly, a lot. The other one is Scout. She is um, a, a sweet angel who either looks like Benedict Cumberbatch or uh, Phil Collins. I'm not joking, and there's no in between. It's it's one or the other. She either has this really intense stare with these high cheekbones, or she's just like. Hmm, just being being Phil Collins, so that's a thing. Jazzy B says, "Is she in the air tonight?" <laughs> oh. Jack Wood says, "That's some impressive range." I know, right? They're really old posts, but I think there are. I think I have posted comparisons of Scout to uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and uh, Phil Collins on my Instagram. I'll dig them up, and put them on the um, put them on the Discord if I remember. <laughs> Titan Your Owner says Benedict Collins sounds like a drink. It does, doesn't it? Mm. Imperial City Guard has done a super chat saying if you play them what's your favourite pre-written campaign for D&D &D? if you don't um, if you don't have one or play them what's your favourite style of homebrew campaign hope you're doing well I've only ever um, mm, I've run one I did the Lost Minds of Fandolver that was the first ever d and I did I sort of ran the Classic starter box adventure for some friends. It was very silly. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was fun. Uh, I actually am quite nostalgic for that one in particular. Um, I don't have much to compare it to, but it was fun. And I have played a very, very abbreviated version of Curse of Strahd. Uh, that was when I was at Dicebreaker. Um, in terms of my favourite style of homebrew campaign, goodness. Um... That's a good question. I think I like... Um, I'm a very, very character-forward uh, role player. Um, but I, like... I actually really like campaigns that are quite granular. I like having a strong adversary, but if it gets to things like you need to stop the apocalypse... I tune out a little bit because the sense of scale is so vast that me role playing the character feels a little bit out of whack. It's like, why am I worried about how my character is is acting in this or that scenario when we're trying to stop the apocalypse? Um, so I like small scale stories, um, kind of like the difference between like one of the the main numbered Star Wars films and an episode of The Mandalorian being like, the car's not working. Uh, I like the smaller ones. Because um, they can feel really important and, and significant, and I'm loath to use the word epic, but epic. Um, even if you're not saving an entire planet or what have you. So that kind of thing, I think. Uh, but I don't actually play very much D&D &D outside of work. Um, I tend toward other role-playing games like Deadlands or um, Blaze in the Dark or uh, I'm playing Dread this week and I cannot wait. It's going to be great. So yeah, that's the sort of thing. That's the sort of... That's the sort of ticket. Yeah. Bit more metal in there. Oh. 
Ginger Pickle McPickle says, so have discussed Book of Boba yet? I haven't actually seen the Book of Boba Fett yet. Uh, obviously, if you have seen it, no spoilers, please. Um, because there will be people in chat who haven't seen it who would like to. But it looks interesting. Uh, Colin Laster says, Johnny, have you ever played Shadowrun? That was the TTRPG I grew up on. Yes, I have played a whole campaign of the latest... Is it Sixth World? Um, I was an... What was... So my character was called Echo. She was an orc... What would the class be? She did lots of magic. I did lots of. Uh, I was basically a. I was basically a combat mage in the end. I started out being a um, being all about stealth, and then I learned acid wave and was like, oh, I'm a combat mage. Uh, it was great fun. It was very, very, very good. Um, uh, I was basically my yeah. Echo was a shadow runner who used to work for a corp um, but didn't like it anymore and basically met a Shadowrunner. Got got mugged by a Shadowrunner? Yeah, she got mugged by a Shadowrunner and was like, well, that looks like fun. So she basically lied to her family and was like, yeah, I still work at the corp. Um, but she doesn't, but she does financially support them and in order to set herself up as a Shadowrunner, she took out a loan with the wrong people. She was horribly, horribly in debt to a loan shark. Um, and, uh, basically anytime we, we earn money off the score, uh, I sent most of it to my family. So I always had like barely any money. And I, my whole thing was about like, um, just trying to, uh, um, pay off the interest on the loan. Uh, eventually I worked myself out of debt and it was like a proper like, yeah, moment. It was good. I really enjoyed that campaign. It was silly but fun. We had some really strong characters in it. Okay, there's that Dwarf. We're getting there. Bloody hell, there's still skin to layer up, isn't there? Oof. Thunder Cookie says, we're playing an official campaign for Pathfinder, and it's amazingly detailed to the point where we did something utterly ridiculous and the adventure had it covered. Wow, that's impressive. Because normally it's hard to predict people. Hey, Cloud2466, I won't read out your comment because I don't I don't know if you would want me to or not, but um, I hope you're okay. Hang on in there. Um, I'm sorry that you're having a bit of a rough time, but um, I hope you can... Um, I hope things improve, and I hope you can find support from those around you um, and that it helps see you through. Uh, did I fuck that up? No, that's okay. My helmet's alright. Um, Silver Sword again says, I really want to try Shadowrun, but I can't find the time to try and pass the rule book. It's a lot. Like, I played... So the campaign I played in ran for nearly a year, and I still don't understand a whole bunch of, um, of, of the way Shadowrun works. Like, even in, like, our big finale session, they'd be like, we need to do this. And I'd be like, and how does that work again? It's hard. It's hard to get... It's hard to get um, your head around, really. It is uh, difficult. Um, I don't think I would ever run it, personally. But the the guy who was running it has played shitloads of Shadowrun. Um, so he was he was pretty on it. But I don't... I uh, Yeah, I don't think I would ever agree to run Shadowrun. It's just too much for me to learn. Which is a shame, because I think it's a great game. Um, but yeah, oof. I did really enjoy being Echo, though. She nearly died so many times. Mostly from Drain, actually. Good times. Ah. <sighs>
Silver Sword again says, yeah, as a prospective GM, the density is extra daunting. Yeah. Although, if you get an early enough uh, version of the uh, Shadowrun rulebook, you get that incredible bit where um, they're talking about something magical, and it's basically a bit of filler copy that they forgot to edit out. So um, it starts off being like, these spirits are this way because, and then the text reads, argle bargle foofa raw, hey diddy ho diddy, no one knows. <laughs> and it's so funny. Cheerful Spider's on a super chat saying, simply wishing you a safe, rewarding, and happy new year. Thank you very much, Cheerful Spider. I hope you catch many delicious bugs in your web this year. Um, in all seriousness, thanks for being a part of the chat and uh, for the support and the kind words. I hope you have a bloody lovely 2022. I am cautiously hopeful for this year. It's probably as much as I'm willing to say, because it's terrifying to think of anything else. Um, but yeah, my hope is that things look up a little bit after this year. Because at some point, they have to, on a global scale, right? You'd hope. We'll see. That could just be horrible naivety. But, yes. Alrighty. There goes that. Getting there. We've only got one more dwarf to do the metal on. Jazzy B says, what games are you most looking forward to this year? That's a good question. Uh, my mind is immediately going blank, which is more than slightly embarrassing. Um... What are the big ticket items out this year? Obviously, I know that Emma Benton is currently typing furiously Horizon Forbidden West. Um, hmm. For Spoken is intriguing me, says Jazzy B. Horizon God of War. Stalker 2. Yeah, none of these really feel like they're in my wheelhouse, to be honest. I still haven't played the uh, the latest God of War. <gasps> Angel Beat says Little Kitty Big City. Yeah, that game looks brilliant. <laughs> very much looking forward to that. Sean Carr says Elden Ring has me very excited. I should be more excited for Elden Ring, but I haven't touched Demon Souls and I haven't touched Sekiro yet. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, to be honest I think I'm like Hermit Prime who says I have no idea what's coming out this year same which feels weird because I used to have to be really on top of it but I'll check in with it okay one last dwarf metal thing to do Oh, thank goodness, that one doesn't have the annoying trim on the shoulder pad. Have I already done this one? What the fuck? It seems like I have. Nothing quite like the end of a painting stream for me to feel like I'm absolutely... Yeah, I've already done this one. <laughs> okay. Oh, I nearly just washed my brush in some cold coffee, so that's fun. Let's see. Right. Permit me two minutes, chat. I'm going to oh, get to order some bento boxes. <laughs> uh, what's the place called? God, this must be thrilling for you. How did you spend your evening? I watched a person stop painting Warhammer so they could order 
to bento boxes on the internet. Teriyaki tofu. Teriyaki tofu bento, add to order. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? My free tofu is so good. Yeah, fuck it. Wafu tofu bento. Delicious. Da, 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 da. Go to payment. Just pulled the hair out of my beard. That was fun. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, chat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the Benton Bento! Uh, right, so what do we have to do next? We are going to uh, just layer up the skin on um, on this uh, these here dwarves. And then we'll be able to shade them, which will be very exciting. Um, my brain's falling away like a wet cake. Um, and Felix Ross says, I'm about to go back to school and straight into keeping year 11 calm in mock exams, so I will take this delightful sidestep into bento boxes with calm and quiet glee. Okay, good. I'm glad, <laughs> glad to be of assistance. Good luck keeping year 11 calm through mocks. Mocks were... Honestly, I remember mocks being more stressful than the, my actual proper exams at school. Like, they were just horrible. Like, a horrible, horrible experience. <laughs> I wonder if it's just because they came so early in the year that I was like, I don't know, I don't know all the things yet. But, like, I always felt much more confident going into the real things. I think probably because... I didn't probably didn't revise for my mocks. I'm gonna say probably. I know I didn't. Uh, I kind of winged them, and I got a right royal bollocking about it. But anyway, like I say, academically at school, at least in the way I carry myself, not a role model. So if you've got mocks coming up, study for them. So there. Sorry, I don't think any of you have actually adopted me as a role model. Anyway, you're. Far, far too sensible for that. Just painting a little... Hello, Luna. Goodness. Painting a little dwarf tum-tum there. Just hidden, hidden away behind the beard. I'm pleased with how these are looking. There it is. They've, they've said the thing. Um, this colour scheme has come out nicely, and I'm glad. Uh, Chartreuse Goose says, was that a Watson pause? No, I think that was Luna scratching. Um, Luna's not Luna's not the sharpest tool in the shed. What she just did there was she used a litter tray and instead of covering up uh, her mess, she just went to the bag of litter and went... Because <laughs> that's what Luna's like. Um, but we love her. So that's fine. So I'm layering up the skin on this lot, but actually once I've shaded this, I'm going to do it again. It's just that I find if I layer up the skin before shading and then do it again, it's a lot smoother um, and it gives like a nice sense of, of contrast and just generally looks good. So that's why I'm doing that. One down. And that was the Troll Slayer, so that's the most amount of skin we're going to have to do. Because this lot, we just got to do the backs of their calves and their hands, their faces and necks. Oopsie. Shit. Grumble says my cat wipes the tiles in front of the litter box and wonders why it doesn't cover the mess. I'm glad I'm not the only one whose cat is just like, I've poured at something.
Two down. Four to go. Rob Graves says, you all have renewed my faith in my cat's intelligence. Good, I'm glad someone's cat is coming out of this well. I haven't noticed Luna being particularly dim, it's just she's bad with the bad at knowing how to cover up stuff in the litter tray. Alright, that's another one done, four down, two to go, and then we're going to shade them. And then to be honest with you, these won't dry. That's already painted. Um, so one to go. Uh, by the time the shade dries, it'll be time to end the stream. So I'm going to shade these models and then sort of say a leisurely goodbye and then just wait for a bento box to arrive. What a Monday. What a bloody Monday. Okay, do that bit. Cool, cool, cool. Right. Jazzy B says, so we're now on to cat litter chat as the theme now. Yeah. You know, the chat goes places. It's fast moving. Right. Now I'm going to shake this pot of Agrax Earthshade for ages. Well, that's a... That's a bot, isn't it? I'll hide that person. Mm -mm -mm. Hannah says our girl Pandora also scratches the floor around the litter box. We theorise she has the biological instinct to scratch, but actually has no idea why she does it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Luna sometimes covers her mess, but... Um... Get a Vortex Mixer, Johnny, says RV Dammit. I like shaking them. Um... There's no space on my desk for for a uh, Vortex Mixer. And I do, I do just like giving them a good shake. I promise. Okay, there we go. Now it's time. Mabel Teacher says, lol, my upstairs neighbour just came by and I think they will be coming round on Mondays again to watch the stream with me. Ah, that's nice. Okay, shade, shade, shade. Now oh, I missed a bit. Oh well, I missed a bit with the metal, I mean. Obviously if I missed a bit with the shade, I could fix it immediately. And wow, that's yeah, that is a damp dwarf now. But once that shade settles and dries, there'll be some decent contrast going on there. Oh god, it's it's very nice reaching the shading bit. Ah, oh, Burrito's done a super chat saying one last super chat, the first stream of the year done. Uh, thank you very much, Burrito. Yeah, it's nice to have one under the belt. I feel like I'm back properly now. Um I'm gonna get back in the swing of things. Um, it's always such a relief to reach the shading stage, not because, just because it's 
basically liquid talent and it makes everything look better but it feels like a it feels like a checkpoint it's like oh great if i need to i can leave these models now and highlight them later like which is what i'm gonna have to do um it's just it's very very rewarding in um because sometimes if i stop painting models while i'm still basing them and i haven't shaded them it feels like i'm really I just don't go back to them, and it's annoying. So, you know, it's good. Uh, and it is... Oh, it's... Yeah, it's nice to have little projects to do. I think that's why I've taken to stuff like Blood Bowl so much, is that um, it's, you know, it's never more than 16 models, really. Normally, anyway. Um, whereas 16 models... In other games, it's like that's nothing. That's barely even the start of of a force or an army or your team or whatever. Uh, so it's nice to do these little projects and move on to something else and pick a new color palette and pick new fluff for them and you know all that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, Abadosi and Chulak Two has done a super chat, super chat saying, "Now I am here when I was, now I am here when I was not. Happy New Year! I'm not a bot, but you can see all my photos at HTT Connection Seven." <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, definitely not a bot, Abadosi and Chulak too. Um, Happy New Year to you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> like I say, fingers crossed. Quietly, quietly, um, quietly hopeful for 2022. We'll see how it goes. Uh, 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 just got to dab a bit more shade on two more dwarves, and then I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell until Thursday when I'll be back streaming a video game. Uh, I don't know what yet. Um, I will decide. New gaming PC doesn't arrive until later this month, so it'll be something not too taxing for my ailing little rig, which has served me very well. Tony Doak has done wow, a massive super chat. Thank you. Saying, glad to finally catch a stream from the start, and even better, it's the first of the year. Here's to all the chaos we embark on in 2022. Yes, I don't know where we're going, but I know it's going to be chaotic uh, as we as we get there. So strap in, everyone. We're doing it all again. We're off for another wild ride. I can't wait to see what this year's cursed model turns out to be, to be honest. Oh, shit. It's fine. Uh, Sega Genesis says, Hades? Uh, Ginger Pickle McPickle says, Afterburner? Um, I will think. It will not be Spirit Fairer, I'm afraid. Who MD? I'm not emotionally ready for that game again. But I'll uh, I'll have a think. Nathaniel Levy says something with a hotess. I wouldn't hate something with a hotess, I'll be perfectly honest. I'll try and... Maybe, I'll try, maybe we'll try and Dark Souls hotess. I'll see. Right, that's that shaded. And um, with that, we are... A, a good way into finishing that Blood Bowl team. Dungeon Bowl team. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me uh, on this, the first stream of 2022. Um, gosh, it's nice to be back. Um, I hope you've had a lovely time. I certainly have. Uh, I will be back on Thursday with, as I say, a game stream. Um, probably something to do with a hotess. Um, and then on Saturday there'll be new episodes of Press Any Chiodini. I will keep you updated on other Patreon stuff as and when it comes out. But yeah, thank you all so much again for, for watching. It's lovely to be back uh, and to be taking a good long run up to the start of the second year of doing this nonsense on uh, on Patreon. So um, yeah, have a good evening everyone or however much of your day is left. Um, take care of yourselves. Stay hydrated. Uh, tell, tell your friends you love them. Um, Thank you again for watching, and uh, I'll catch you very soon. Goodbye.